Marino, who was one time a Newcastle United player, along with Rodri, then Jeremy Pino wide right, Mikel Oyatabal wide left, Danny Ceballos in the number 10 role, and Hosselu up front once of Newcastle and Stoke, and the man who scored two goals on his debut against Norway on Saturday. We're about to get underway. There's the whistle from the referee from Switzerland. Spain will play from right to left as we begin. Boos and whistles from the Scottish crowd as Spain hold early possession inside their own half. This is Scotland against Spain, the second qualifier for Euro 2024 for both of these teams. And McTominay wins possession back inside the Scotland half and it's delivered forward towards Lyndon Dykes and the game getting underway at a solid tempo as Gaia plays a good ball in towards the edge of the Scotland penalty area but Oyatabel can't do anything with it and it rolls through to Angus Gunn who only made his debut on Saturday and he clears it away into the Spanish half yeah he had a one little slip on Saturday a worrying one not his fault uh, slippy conditions but I mean he got a, a clean sheet in his first game so that's a real lift for any goalkeeper earlier on this evening Georgia and Norway drew in this group 1-1 Will that turn out to be a good result for Scotland? A minute played. Aretha Balaga, who's done well to get back into favour at Chelsea, a career so promising in his youth that appeared to have stalled over the last two seasons. But back now, first choice for his country. As Ryan Porteous wins ahead of him a halfway line, bounces inside the Spanish half. McGinn tries to get a flick on, falls to Dykes. Left footed shot is blocked by Pedro Porro. Good defending. Rodri's back there and he can't fully clear. And Scotland are going to remain on the attack here. Tierney feeds it to Robertson on the left hand side. We've played 90 seconds. James McFadden's alongside me as well. James, good start this from Scotland. Yeah, it has been Spain, as, as you can imagine, started with the ball. Scotland in a good shape to, to try and press, and then you get that chance here. And I, well, I like the fact that Lyndon Dykes takes the shot on because it shows that he's got that confidence, that belief. It's at the edge of the box, it's on his left foot, but I think it's the right decision, even though it's blocked. And Scotland managed to keep the, the, the ball after that. But it'd be interesting to see how they cope with Oyathabo and Pino are both playing really high on that back line of Scotland on the outside of the two outside centre-backs trying to stretch Scotland and make it into a back five so it'll be interesting to see how Hickey and Robertson deal with that and then Portis and, and Tierney in that back three Spain scored against Norway on Saturday after 13 minutes it feels imperative that Steve Clark's team have a good start here Scotland nil, Spain nil. five live from the BBC Tierney brings it out of defence for Scotland exchanges passes with the captain Andy Robertson Tierney gives it back to Robertson again it's just midway inside the Scotland half and eventually the clearance from the Arsenal defender goes straight down the middle and a touch for Inigo Martinez who's winning his 20th cap this evening a player who's had to be very patient as all central defenders have had to be for Spain in recent years for a long time he was behind Sergio Ramos and Puyol and Gerard Piquet and that defence pretty much picked itself for, for a long long time as Spain tried to attack down the right hand side but that's way too far in front of Jeremy Pino and it goes out for a goal kick to Scotland and to Angus Scott, nil nil Pat yeah, Nevin. quite happy about that Scotland you know, pressing a little bit, making them play the long pass one of the things that we need to keep an eye on for Scotland tonight is uh, when the ball is played up long, usually to Dykes uh, how often Christie or Obviously, John McGinn can get beyond him, get close to him, get tight with him. And as we uh, set up just now, balls played to McGinn, and he, he has got players up alongside him. So the, the front man can't get isolated. That's the imperative. Robertson rolls it back to Angus Scott, who had that uh, clean sheet on his debut on Saturday, which is always good for goalkeepers and their confidence. As Dykes jumps in the air, but he's beaten by the debutant David Garcia of Osasuna. Big night for him. And now McTominay leaps near the centre circle. An attempt to control it on his stomach by Dykes, but it spills away from him. And Pedro Porro will bring possession back into the Scotland half. But there's a, a hunger from the Scottish midfield, and they hound the Spanish back into their own half. And Igor Martinez to the halfway line again. Infield of him, Danny Ceballos wearing the number 10 shirt. This is Pedro Porro available just inside Scotland territory. Rodri feeding it over to the right hand side Scotland falling back into a defensive formation and it can be a flat back five if it needs to be 
Ceballos again near the centre circle of Spain for the first time tried to dictate the tempo of the game nice one too Real Madrid man tries to play a ball towards Oriet Abel on the edge of the penalty area but Scotland clear it away picked up by Gaia on the left hand side careless pass pounced upon by Lyndon Dyke Scotland regained possession Aaron Hickey of Brentford has it on the right hand side gives it into John McGinn Scotland do well to hold on to it in a tight corner and warm applause from the Hampden crowd yeah, it's brilliant because when that ball comes back to Aaron Hickey it looks like he's going to just play it up the line the safe option he doesn't plays it back inside to McGinn they work it from the right wing back area out to the left wing area now and they're using the ball really well and it's something they have to do because when it when they lose it the transition spain are good because then they go and hunt and try and find it but you know when scotland have possession it's not as though they're going in numbers they put them under pressure so they can be patient knock it about and wait for that opening which they've done so five minutes played scotland nil spain nil qualifiers for euro 2024 which will be in germany in just over a year's time and Scotland tried to attack down the left Robertson couldn't take it with them against Pedro Porro but the Spaniards clearance isn't great and Scotland regained the ball still inside Spain's half Tierney turns and rolls it back to Grant Hanley I mentioned Aaron Hickey there who is the youngest player in this Scotland squad only 20 years of age but how composed how mature he appears playing in the Premier League with Brentford and taking very well to the international stage too Tierney on the left hand side a wave of his right hand to signal to his teammates he wants them to push up a little bit Tierney takes it all the way to the halfway line plays a nice little ball into the Scotland half Robertson will try to run onto a through ball from Christie that wasn't great Robertson's made the most of it pulls it back McTominay Scotland lead and it's Scott McTominay again he scored twice off the bench against Cyprus on Saturday in the starting 11 tonight Scott McTominay delivers for Scotland and they lead Spain six minutes played Scotland won Spain nil just fantastic of course it's going to come down the left hand side look it's a mistake from the Spanish it was a slip we used to that because we saw that that happened during the game at the weekend there but it was straight onto it and it wasn't a, an endless ball in it was in straight to McDominay and if you've just scored two goals in your last game near the end of the game you're not going to think twice he didn't think twice takes a little deflection Arita Balaga can do nothing that's brilliant from Andy Robertson because he chases a ball as we know and expect that he's no right to win yes there's a slip but he's still there and then when he gets in this position it looks like he's going to fire it across goal to Lyndon Dykes who looks like he's in space he gets his head up cut back from McTominay there's a slight deflection on it but it's goal bound anyway what a start for Scotland well the moods the atmosphere was so buoyant anyway this will now send things into a different stratosphere Hampton Park packed to the rafters and Scotland with the perfect start and a goal that Spain would have been pleased with and we all know how neat and intricate their play is around the penalty area Scotland took that so well do you know you got confidence thing when you're playing against some of the biggest nations in the world you want to believe in your own ability there's nothing that gives you more confidence than an early goal and also holding the ball well Scotland have held the, held the ball well now the trick is now not to sit too far back and allow Spain to dominate all the possession keep on playing the way Scotland were playing before and we'll have more chances Tottenham's Pedro Borro was the player who slipped in the build up he's on the attack here down the right hand side as Spain looked to make amends and he wants a corner and he's not going to get it last touch came off the man on loan from Sporting Lisbon and he turns and runs back towards the halfway line Robertson had a little look knew exactly where McTominay was and he didn't blast it he side footed it it did get a little deflection on the way through but that's a placed finish from Scott McTominay yeah I, I love everything about the goal because Andy Robertson as we're used to seeing chasing a lost cause and we spoke about it before the game about the shifting in mentality and the step up at opposition maybe on Saturday against Cyprus Andy Robertson would have taken an extra touch or tried to fire that to Lyndon Dykes but he gets his head up nice and early it's a pass for uh, Scott McTominay just to step on it and side foot Scotland have got the wind in the sails now Ryan Christie down the right hand side pushes it for Hickey flag is raised and the officials say that Scotland were offside there so an excellent start in Glasgow for Steve Clark's team
What about Wales at Cardiff City Stadium hosting Latvia this evening? Chris Coles. Yeah, it's been a pretty good start for Wales here, Connor. Still nil-nil, but Wales dominating possession. They've had the game's best opportunity. Harry Wilson arriving in the box to meet Dan James Lowcross. Well saved by the legs of Latvia goalkeeper Pavel Steinbors. Eight minutes in, Wales nil, Latvia nil. Thanks, uh, Chris. Earlier on this evening, Georgia won, Norway won in this group. This is Group A of qualifiers for... Euro 2024, 20 teams will earn their place in Germany through these groups. There's 10 of them, the top two from each group goes through. As things stand, Scotland top of the group. Three other teams will go through the playoffs and Scotland do have that in their back pocket as well because of the good performance in the Nations League. Even if this group didn't go to plan, Scotland could get in through the back door that way. Don't try telling Stevie Clark that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Ignores it. Absolutely There's no another, interest another in thing about, you know, before the game, speaking about him saying we need to believe. He's been saying that as well. Forget about the playoff. Let's qualify outright. And that is an aim for this group. And hopefully they do it. This much changed Spanish team struggling to get a grip in the early stages. Ten minutes played now. A McTominay goal came in the seventh minute. Scotland leading. A Spanish opponent who's been so tricky for them over the years. The last time Scotland came here was the qualifiers for Euro 2012 and at that time they were the reigning world champions. Here is Danny Ceballos on the edge of the penalty area. One of the more experienced players in this young Spanish team. Gets it back again from Inigo Martinez. Ceballos, 15 yards outside the penalty area. Short ball towards Hosselu. And now a cross will come in from Pedro Porro. That's a great delivery, but Oyatabal wasn't able to get up off the ground. And Scotland relieved to see that one away. Throw into Spain on the left-hand side. That was dangerous down the right-hand side. Nice little setback just to step on it. First time cross. And Oyatabal's at the back post, but he's crowded out by three Scotland defenders. And then, you know, there's someone else. I couldn't quite see who it was. Running to try and keep that ball in as well. So it's something that maybe is a bit different from Spain, where they're putting the crosses into the box. But Scotland are ready for that one, and I'm sure, you know, as the game goes on, they'll, they'll get more of the ball, more of these opportunities. Ball played forward by Mikel Marino. Good, accurate pass to Gaia on the left-hand side. He gives it back to Danny Ceballos, veering in field, just outside the D of the penalty area. Plays a lovely ball, almost for Oyatabal. That was very good for the Real Madrid man. Oyatabal stretching, but just wasn't able to get there. That's the most dangerous we've seen from Spain so far. As it was tight whether it was offside, he probably was just onside. However, this is very different from the Spain at the World Cup. This is the Spanish side. When they get the ball, they're moving it much, much quicker. As Fadi says, they're getting it wide as well, getting crosses in. But also, they've always got four, five men in the box. This is a very offensive-looking Spanish team. The worry there was it looked like no one knew where Oyatabo was. Yeah. No one was aware. Porte stepped up. Hanley was looking into the centre. Uh, Hosselu, that can't continue to happen. So, 30 minutes played in Hampton, Scotland 1, Spain nil. England's under-21s are playing a friendly this evening against Croatia. I'm always a fan of Henry, Henry Moran's uh, social media photos from his exotic critic, uh, cricket locations. And he's taken some great photos tonight at, at Craven Cottage. We'll go to Henry in just a moment. Cross from the left-hand side from Ryan Christie. Doesn't find its way through to Dykes. Callum McGregor will pick up possession for Scotland. That's a clever ball. Now Christie can swing it in, but too close to the goalkeeper. And Aretha Balaga makes the save. So England under 21s against Croatia. Henry Moran. What a spot it is here. Down by the Thames. The wooden seats. The old stands. The view obstructing post in front of you. Goalless here after 11 and a half minutes. England the better of the two sides. Three different penalty appeals turned down. Cole Palmer in particular on that right-hand side has looked really lively. England impressive without creating many real opportunities. Goalless after 12. Thanks very much, Henry. So, Scott McTominay's goal has Scotland off to a brilliant start to this qualifying group, having beaten Cyprus on Saturday, now leading Spain. There's a long way to go, but right here, right now, Scotland can dream big dreams. As it's played forward by David Garcia, an attempted at crossfield ball that's easy pickings for Aaron Hickey. And then McGinn shows real good lower body strength to hold off a challenge and to play it through to Ryan Christie. Now accelerating into the Spanish half, getting to the edge of the penalty area. Toe pokes it just wide. What a goal that would have been. He picked it up on the halfway line. He ran it into the Spanish penalty area. And on another day, that could have nestled into the bottom corner. Well, they just evaporated that defence. They just No one came out to get him. 
and he's went for the right option on Topol. A very underused skill, but one that is keepers hate it because they can't see the left of the foot. And he just didn't get a, a direct toe poke on it. Took a little bit of a bend. But Aretha Blaga wasn't getting to that. He wasn't. And it was a great run. Started with John, John McGinn showing that strength. We're used to seeing on the turn. And when Ryan Christie drives forward, Scott McTominay's on his right-hand side. He makes a diagonal run, which affects Garcia and Martinez. And that's why the space opened up for Ryan Christie. And he goes for the toe poke. It just bends the wrong way for him. But... A nice positive attack for Scotland again. Quarter of an hour played. Spain have not settled very well so far, but there's a lot of talent in the visitors' team. They will remain a threat as Ayatabel collides with Ryan Porteous, and the referee gives the free kick to Scotland on the edge of the host penalty area. Come on, I, I actually think inside. Spain are actually playing quite well just now. I think they are settled in a way, but they're not good at the transition. When we win the ball off them, they do look quite rattled. We've obviously scored one goal from it. We win the ball back there, and John McGinn doing what John McGinn does best with his backside. And we, we seem to be able to get up there back four, who, as we mentioned before the game, never played together before. A little bit edgy. Do you think that at some point we're going to start naming that a skill, the John McGinn, like the Cruyff uh, turn? No, no, it's known as the, it's known as the Kendall Gleeson. Yes, yeah. the Kendall Gleeson. <laughs> the Sir King Kenny Douglas, yes. that one. Uh, Polo plays it forward for Spain, but it's far too far in front of Jeremy Pino of Villarreal. And Angus Gunn comes out of his penalty area and then just sells a dummy and allows it to Scotland, go out for the goal kick. Scotland have got three players injured at the moment, <laughs> which is a little bit of a concern. John McGinn's holding the back of his head, Christie in the middle there, and Dykes all kind of hurtling as we see up here in Scotland. Too early to time this? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just a tad. Actually, John McGinn did get a hit right in his head there from Martinez. They could just keep it tight for these last 74 minutes now. <laughs> Don't <laughs> clock watch this early. Apart from anything else, it's a good game of football. I mean, it really is a good game of football. Two very, very different styles just now. But it's it's enjoyable and it's it's been a very good pace. Yes, it's, uh, it's good conditions for international football. There's still even a tiny bit of daylight in the night sky. Evidence of the clocks having changed since Scotland played on Saturday. Floodlights beaming down on the green pitch as... Scotland tried to break into, uh, sorry, Spain tried to break into Scotland territory. McTominay with a good interception, and then a push on the back of Linda Dykes and a, a free kick to Scotland. And McGregor tries to take it quick there, doesn't he? <laughs> the ball's still rolling, but it just shows Scotland they're not going to slow down and wait all the time. When they've got a chance to break, that's when they try and go for it, and uh, that's definitely a plan, isn't it? Yeah, I, I don't mind that one from Lyndon Dykes either because right at the start of the game, one comes into his chest, he tries to almost turn on his first touch and it's the ball's taken off him he had the opportunity just to flick that inside to Ryan Christie who was making the run but he took the safe option get control of the ball take the foul take the pressure off a little bit and get Scotland further up the pitch so the free kick taken by Tierney lumps down towards the edge of the Scotland penalty area or a double wins the header and the ball goes out of play of a Scotland player and that'll be a throw into Spain left full back position for them taken by Jose Gaia, the Valencia captain, he's had a, a tough campaign at club level. And no way out easily there for Spain as it eventually goes for a Scotland throw inside their opponent's half. Well, that's just what Scotland want, isn't it? You know, not to allow them to play out easily so they can control it and we're chasing shadows. You know, pressing them into a little bit of a... I've just done exactly the same again. Scotland get the ball back. Callum McGregor feeds it back to Tierney and from the halfway line with Hosselu sprinting in and he turns and rolls it back to Angus Scott who's launched it route one straight down the middle and Dykes just unable to get in around behind David Garcia and it carries through to Kepa Aretha Balaga Scotland leading Spain 1-0 here on 5 Live tomorrow night we'll have Arsenal women against Bayern Munich in the Women's Champions League quarter final that's an 8 o'clock kickoff David Garcia He's a late comer to international football, his debut at the age of 29. Aretha Balaga sends it out towards the left wing. Gaia is his target here. Porteous wins the header. Spain will regain possession of the halfway line. Inigo Martinez just about keeping it in play. Scotland looking very organised, very well drilled as things stand, leading by a goal to nil. Back to Cardiff, Wales, Latvia, Chris Coles. Still nil nil, 18 minutes played, but a warning sign for Wales. Excellent chance for Latvia, corner, confusion in the penalty area, eventually volleyed goalwards, and a really good Danny Ward save. 
for a goal-bound volley that was certainly heading in. Wales nil, Latvia nil. Here come Spain. Gaius crosses good and a save by Angus Scott. After a bullet header from the edge of the six-yard box, that's the first test for the Norwich City goalkeeper. And he held onto it. It was straight at him, but it was powerful. Exactly the type of test, the first touch you want, isn't it? Because it is, you're right, powerful, but straight at him. One that he can gather, do the old goalie's favourite and fall to the ground and, and waste a couple of seconds. But yeah, it's good for him to get a touch and it's taken him almost 20 minutes to get that, that first save, which is a positive. Spectator for much of the game against Cyprus at the weekend. Angus Scott, he might be a bit busier this evening. He's had the highest save percentage in the championship this season. Do you know what? Every time he makes a save, it doesn't matter how good or bad it is, camera's straight on his dad. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make no facial look. But he's delighted and he's very proud of his son so far. Yeah. Proud week for the Gunn family. Angus making his first two senior appearances for Scotland. Here is Mikel Moreno on the halfway line for Spain. Back to Pedro Porro, turns, gives it back to David Garcia. Spain will look to build from the back. We're so used over the years to Spanish teams dictating the tempo and hogging the possession. But they're finding it difficult to impose that tonight. Here's Deli Ceballos outside of the boots. Crossfield ball from left to right. Pedro Porro up to the edge of the penalty area that Spain attack. Scotland is sitting deep. This is Inigo Martinez, that's a good ball. Rodri of Manchester City, 10 yards inside the box. Danny Ceballos, low to the feet of Oyatabal. He runs into trouble though, McGregor's won it back to Scotland and McTominay turns, feeds it to Angus Gunn who will clear away. Yeah, but that's what they'll have to do, isn't it? I, I do see one slight problem for Scotland at the moment uh, and it's Hickey's so desperate to get forward that there is a little bit of a gap he's been they're overloading him just a few times just now. I think Fadi spotted it quite early on with the through ball that was almost played in this left hand side but with John McGinn and Hickey desperate to get forward on the right hand side there is a little bit of an overlap it's because they're pushing the two white men high and wide and the full backs have got so much time and space so I think his natural instincts to go and press the full back and, and went to release which is making it making it difficult for him but I'm sure as the game goes on, they'll be able to try and figure that out. McTominay's done a great job in filtering over this side. Callum McGregor in the, in the left-hand side. But it is, it is a concern, you're right. Midway through the first half at Hampden. Scotland's good start continuing. Scotland won Spain nil. Hickey will play it from the halfway line back to Gunn. Now that's not the most kind back pass you've ever seen. And Gunn does slice his clearance. He's got it away. But it's skewed out for a Spain throw. And that's the you know, that's the first bit, bit of uncertainty we've seen from Scotland tonight. And Hickey, not quite sure what he was doing with the launched back pass. Oh, I, I don't think I've ever seen that. I've never <laughs> seen that. I mean, it looked like he meant it as well, which yeah. is even more bizarre. <laughs> yeah, Guy has done well. Danny Sabayas to the byline. Left-hand side, another good delivery. Hoslu threw his body at it but couldn't get the touch. Here's Pedro Porro just on the edge of the Scotland penalty area. Cross comes in, Hasselu up, header off the crossbar, cleared away by McTominay, almost a bicycle kick to clear. Hasselu got two goals on Saturday, coming as close as Spain have done in the match as McGinn brings it up to the halfway line and outnumbered by opponents, he's tackled by Rodri. What a chance for Hasselu. I wonder if he got a touch, do you think? I think he might have got a touch, go Gunny, and a... And the goal there, but again, left hand side, right hand side, but most of the left, a lot of good crosses coming in. Scotland have to start stopping them at source. So Spain just beginning to grow in confidence in terms of attacking play now. Scotland leading because of Scott McTominay's well taken opening goal inside seven minutes. Pedro Porro of Spurs tries to cross it in right footed, and the ball is blocked by Ryan Christie. It goes out for a Scott, uh, Spain throw on the far side, a much disputed Spain throw, but that's what the officials say. Now, Ryan Christie getting in a tangle after that has been called over by the referee. He just felt he was a bit too fired up there. Play will get back underway with a throw into Scotland on the far side of the pitch from us, taken by Porro back to David Garcia, the Osasuna captain. Here is Inigo Martinez. That's not a good ball, straight to Hickey who could take a touch and control it, and then Ryan Portia sends it back to Gunn. And uh, no skew this time as Gunn clears it cleanly up towards the halfway line. Linden Dykes wins the header, but unable to pick out a teammate. 
Sveen get it back. Boro, right hand side. A few boos for him from Scotland fans after that tangle with Christy a moment ago. Ceballos gives it out to Porro once again, midway into Scotland territory. Loud, raucous atmosphere inside Hampton Park. Danny Ceballos, who's so good at turning, and he's delivered a nice ball down the right hand side. Two defenders there, though. Christy and Robertson sliding in. And then in the aftermath, Porro seemed to just walk into Andy Robertson and then dramatically fall onto the ground. Robertson's reaction, he's furious. He feels that the Spanish player is trying to get him in trouble here. There seemed to be no... We're going to get a replay of it here, but they look at each other. Ooh, oh, well, maybe yeah. does he does he reach out with his arm, Robertson? I think Porro goes does. down, yeah. and remember, there is VAR, so even if that wasn't obvious at the time, the video assistant referee will be seeing those images. Robertson could be in trouble here. It could be. I just hope that it's his shoulder, and he, he almost kind of stands back up to himself. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a red card. I have to say, when, and it's, it's going to be very, very harsh on him. But he's turned around, he's looked at the player, and he's moved his shoulder towards him. And I think he has caught him on his, on his chin. I don't think it's as as much of a haymaker as the photo is making it out to be. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the problem is, it's an upward motion of his shoulder. And he does, I don't think he's mean by any means to hit the player in the face, but Porro's head is going down. The shoulder do, is an uppercut into the chin. And the video assistant referee has a decision to make. Is there leniency here? Will they feel there is any circumstance in which Robertson can be excused for that? This is certainly a worrying moment for Scotland. Of all players, the captain. Well, the thing is, it's, it's definitely a deliberate action. And it goes whether he's, he's just trying to block Porro as he's running in. But, you know, you, you said it, his shoulder kind of goes up the way. It's a hell of a risk to take because he's already won the ball, the ball's gone. And it's, and then there's a coming together. It's a deliberate it, action. And I tell you right now, if this was in Spain, he's off. Yeah. If Phil stop, he's it, off. It's a funny one, you know, we often say don't raise your hand, stuff like that. You know, and he, and he hasn't. It's, I mean, it's quite difficult if you think about to shoulder someone in the face. It's a unique circumstance, but he's put himself in this position. There is a bit of aggression, and the referee is reaching Good. for a yellow card. <laughs> and sighs of relief all over Hamden. Andy Robertson showed yellow. We'll take that. Yeah, we'll, we'll take, take that stick. right now. Stick. I think we're very. Sometimes you've got to be good, and sometimes you've got to be lucky. And I think we've got to be got a little bit lucky there. Many a referee would have went to his back pocket there. No. I think I think because it's the shoulder and not the yeah, elbow or, or the forearm. Him, yeah. I would say that you you could argue that you're bracing yourself for contact, yeah. but he's lucky there lucky and boy. it's a needless risk. Spain attack down the right hand side. Good run. Hustler tries to drill across it for the right hand side. It was Pino to the byline, and now hustler has got it. Good strength from him. Has it gone out for a corner? It has. Corner to Spain on the right hand side. This fiery atmosphere, more fuel thrown on the flames there with that. Uh, altercation <laughs> between Robertson and Robertson telling everybody to calm down right now <laughs> Connor he has to calm himself down just now but I mean that spirit sometimes that lists a team yeah. when you think well I've got away with one there corner to Spain if you're just joining our coverage Scotland 1 Spain 0 Manchester United Scott McTominay scoring early here comes the corner and in swinger from the far side bullet header Rodri just over the top but only by inches that was very, very close. He's only ever scored one international goal, Rodri. Came against Germany in the Nations League a few years back. And the marking wasn't great there. He got in front of a lot of defenders to get there first. And just too high. That's a, that's a chance for Spain, and you're right. The marking wasn't as good as not great there. It was terrible. He was so free. He had so much time to time his run keep his eye on the ball, get a good contact, he should he should probably be doing better with that there, but that is a let off for Scotland. Spain clear it away, Enigo Martinez, Ceballos waited for the ball to come down, McTominay nipped in ahead of him but can't control it, oh yeah, Tabel has fed it through to Husselu and now room for Porro, you can tell by the booze on the right hand side, shoots from miles out, good save, Angus gone, too hot to handle. Pedro Porro really put the laces through that. He was fully 10 yards outside the penalty area, but it's pushed out for a corner. How long is it to half time? <laughs> <laughs> they want to survive this. Scotland now can't get in their own half, can't get a hold of the ball. Since we scored the goal, we've just been slow, but surely 
pushed further and further back and that's two or three very good chances for the Spanish we, we need to stop booing Pedro Porro because he's coming into the game the more booing happening here's the latest delivery brave header by Hickey and it just sat up in front of Jeremy Pino but an awkward stance for him on a uh, on a sort of half volley stance he wasn't able to keep it down and he's, he's skewed that away off target so half an hour played Scotland won Spain nil but it feels like a long time since Scotland have had a touch inside the opponent's half yeah they need to they need to keep the ball they need to use it as well as did before the goal was scored because since then there's been waves of attack for Spain and if you do that you're asking for trouble it's a long time to try and hold out watch Norway against Spain at the weekend and they've done well and they created opportunities but in the end they ran out of steam for chasing the ball and chasing shadows and Scotland need to when they win it back show that composure they've shown they're ahead they're ahead in the game go back to the the key word that Steve Clark used before the game belief take the ball be brave and pass it about and try and make Spain do the running because at the minute they're just knocking the ball about at will, putting crosses into the box, putting Angus Gunn under pressure. So, Scotland still 1-0 in front here, but riding their look a little bit. Let's check in on England's under-21s at Craven Cottage with Henry Moran. He's coming towards the half-hour mark, still goalless between England and Croatia. England have been the better of the two sides. Curtis Jones coming close a moment ago. His shot smothered at the back post by the Croatia goalkeeper Kotarski. Entertaining game, plenty of talent on show. As we head towards the half-hour mark, England under-21s goalless with Croatia. Nervous moment for Scotland as Angus Gunn came off his goal line and for a moment was in no man's land but did well to recover back before Porro could deliver the cross and Spain hold on to possession but now they're back near the halfway line Ceballos uh, to Inigo Martinez John McGinn goes clattering into him and Spain are going to get a free kick I'm not having that he's making the most of that he has to go and close down the ball as much as possible I think that's as much a follow through from Martinez and you it's going to be happening he's made it look a lot worse than it is a goal in League One, Exeter City have taken the lead against uh, Barnsley. That's the only game in League One this evening. There's two games in League Two, AFC Wimbledon nil, Walsall nil, and also scoreless between Crawley and Grimsby. This is five live for the BBC. This is international football. Qualifiers for Euro 2024. And Ceballos has possession 15 yards inside the Scotland half. We'll go for an update from Wales in a moment. Ceballos, good ball. In, struck an arm. Maybe Tierney's. Hosselu, though, was holding on to the Arsenal player. And that is going to be a free kick to Scotland and they breathe again. Let's go to Cardiff. Wales, Latvia, Chris Coles. Oh, Nico Williams, Connor, has just fired over from 25 yards out. Dipping volley, hit it well, but only just over the top. Wales looking good with 15 minutes to play until half time. They're getting closer. Keep them all curling wide from the edge of the penalty area just before that Williams chance Wales nil Latvia nil thanks very much Chris I've just seen a replay of that it was the Spaniard Hosselu who handled the ball in front of the defender Tierney that's where the referee gave the free kick to Scotland they clear it away long down the other end Aretha Balaga to Porro you can tell by the blues and he's going to get those all night now you feel runs across his own penalty area gives it to Inigo Martinez good illustration of the technical ability of these Spanish players even in tight corners they Managed to, to find a teammate and to play their way out. Hickey, very close to the sideline, has done well to keep the ball in play here. Oh, yeah, Tabel in a tangle with them eventually fouls Aaron Hickey. And that is a free kick to Scotland. And they could do with a little defensive breather now. We could do with a break up of play. You know, some maybe something injured or something, just to slow it down a little bit and then get our shape back because we've been under so much pressure. So just a moment or two there. The ball slowed down. We've got a no, a foul that we can now put into the box if we only could hold it up once or twice for Lyndon Dykes that would give us a little bit of a chance to push forward behind it Scotland have not beaten Spain since 1984 Porteous takes the free kick from the halfway line jumping his sights and he wins the header too however he was leading with an arm and a Spanish defender has hit the deck and it's a yellow card for Lyndon Dykes jumping winning the header but the referee says he's cut the defender in the face with his arm I didn't see it first time there but he has leaned and yes he's got him straight in the face again can't really argue with that it's uh, David Garcia the debutant who was cut on the jaw by the trailing elbow of Lyndon Dykes it makes life a wee bit difficult for Lyndon doesn't it because that's his game he's going in there he's going to try and win a few headers there's a bit of you that thinks let's rough them up a wee bit but ask them some questions but that's maybe just a wee bit they're underpale yeah I think even with that one it, it, 
it's sometimes you can see a, a striker and he's, he, he is trying to rough him up and leave a bit on him he's not he's just using his arm for leverage he gets up above Garcia he's unfortunate that it catches him in the face which it does and you know the referee's quite right to give him the yellow card but it's not one of them where he's thinking right I'm going to try and leave a bit of, try and get away with one here but it does leave him in a, a position now where it, it might have to adapt, adopt his game that roar of the back row because Ryan Christie with a well-timed sliding tackle has won the ball off the Spanish defence he's crossed from the left-hand side too high for everyone in there and Hickey's going to try and get there but out-muscled by Oyatabo this is left full-back position for Spain again they try to play their way out Rodri good ball towards uh, Danny Sabayas but it's been won back McTominay great strength on the edge of the area delivers the ball in and sliding David Garcia across his own goal and out for a corner that's excellent Scotland pressure much better much better it comes to Ryan Christie down the left hand side and he puts a great ball in the only problem is John McGinn and Lyndon Dykes both made the same run in the near post John McGinn scores his goal at the back post at the weekend if he makes that same run he's got another goal Scott McTominay does brilliant and now a chance for Scotland to take advantage from a corner John McGinn to take the corner right hand side as Scotland come forward there's a couple of players in on the goal line Lyndon Dykes trying to step on the toes of the goalkeeper and the referee is just trying to separate them all and he's telling everyone he's got their eye on them McTominay's trying to mediate referee's no interest in that well we, we know Kepa's not ultra dominant in his uh, six yard line or in his 18 yard line so that's why they're putting a lot of pressure on him more hassle in the goal now, line two players have got down Tierney and Oyatabo and there's all sorts of jostling and what not going on inside the six yard box and again there's pushing and shoving referee needs eyes in the back of his head here Spain have got to be careful here comes the corner delivery in towards the foot post and headed out corner again do you know what they shouldn't be doing that he's just dragged Tierney twice and the ball comes in again and he's, ho he's held him and do you know what if you look at the VAR then you could give a penalty for that especially you see the ones at the World Cup if you're not looking at the ball and you've just got eyes on the man which he has he's got his two arms round him well it's uh, another corner delivery in from McGinn goalkeepers punched it up Spain haven't got it away yet Gaia slipped here's McGinn who had taken the corner on the right hand side trying to get into a position across Ceballos clatters into him and the referee says no foul here's a cross in from the right hand side won't fall for Tierney Spanish defender goes down free kick to Spain Scotland not happy with that there is a goal at Craven Cottage England under 21s against Croatia Henry Moran and Croatia have got it brilliant free kick goal from Martin Baterina of Dynamo Zagreb curled into the top corner out of nowhere really England the better side but Croatia have the lead they lead by goal to nil Thanks very much, Henry. Scotland lead by a goal to nil here. Spain using some of the dark arts defensively to survive that succession of Scotland corners. I don't know how John McGinn doesn't get a foul there. He's fouled right in front of the assistant referee on this side. It's a clear foul. You can see it from here. And then the ball goes into the box and Spain somehow managed to get the free kick. It's the top two teams in this group, Group A. Scotland leading Spain for the moment. As Inigo Martinez has possession in the centre circle, Spain, who well, you remember the World Cup started like a train. They got that 7 0 win against Costa Rica. We all thought they were going to go win the tournament, and, and then things were to dramatically slow down. And they had the draw with Germany, the draw with Japan, into the, the last 16, beaten by Morocco. Here comes Petro Porro taking on Tierney. Tierney with a good sliding tackle, throw into Spain. I bet you have been in that position, Faddy, where somebody's kicked you or elbowed you at one point and you're the one that's filled, but the fans will still boo you all night long. Bad news is, it just lifts you. Here's a chance, Hosselu into the penalty area. Grant Hanley's the defender, Hosselu collides with him and goes down. Referee isn't fooled by that, Hanley had just stood his ground. I, I think he's waiting for it, I think he's listening. He wants to know if it's a penalty kick, I don't think he's, he wants to make a decision himself, that'll go to VAR. It was Marino's ball into the penalty area. Hosselu yeah. tangling with Grant Hanley. Uh, the VAR will double check it, but I'd be surprised. No, no further action. Goal kick Scotland. The referee has to get a grip of this because every time, and we're, we're used to seeing it, every time there's any kind of contact, he's thrown his leg out yeah. to, to get Hanley. So he's running with the ball, throws his leg out, and there is contact there. But it was definitely Hosselu that 
developed but as he lands he holds his ankle then he puts it up to his knee then he dies they need to the referee needs to get a grip of this and Hosselu, who came on as a sub in the 81st minute on Saturday scored in the 83rd minute scored in the 85th minute all in what was his debut in from the start tonight he's had the header which was touched onto the crossbar he's looked probably the main threat for Spain coming forward there was a good chance for Rodri too and Spain is certainly finishing this first half much better than they started it McGinn good tackle to regain possession Dykes tries to control with David Garcia climbing all over it Spain regained possession Scotland fans wanted a free kick here's Danny Ceballos rolling it to the right hand side to Pedro Porro ball in field to Mikel Moreno this is midway inside Scotland's territory Moreno plays at Real Sociedad these days former Newcastle player that's nice Danny Ceballos to Rodri now Gaia, bit of room on the left wing for Spain. His cross, though, is blocked by Aaron Hickey, who did well to get close. And then McGinn wins a free kick on the edge of the penalty area. Free you know, kick to Scotland. Do you know what? He's come through the back of McGinn there. Who's clever at that? He holds the ball up. You're not allowed to come through the back there. If that happens to a Spanish player there, it's a triple two look and three rolls. But McGinn just gets up again. Yeah, and I think that that's the difference. You know, John McGinn does get up, but you can't leave it and look at the player's reaction for the referee you have to decide is it a foul is it worthy of a yellow card and take action you can't be looking at the reaction of the player because we've, we've, we've seen Hosselu go down and roll about Toro went down after the Andy Robertson no treatment required back up on you go they're, they're, they're playing a game and the referee's buying it at the minute Scotland have certainly not come to shirk out of any challenges tonight they know they've got to win the physical battle and it's that, that little tightrope walk of staying on the right side of the law as well as Gaia comes forward down the left hand side McTominay trying to keep up with him good acceleration from Gaia now he's got to take on Hickey and he can't beat them all and Gaia has run it out of play goal kick to Scotland they still lead 1-0 they are from Hickey you know a couple of times early on you complain about the fact that he's not getting close enough letting the crosses come in quicker well he's in this right hand side and he's got Stevie Clark an exceptional right full back in his own time and he's had a word said get closer don't let the crosses come in easy I think on that one, McTominay actually gets back to help to kind of show guy that he has to go down the line and they're doubling up better. Sometimes Hickey ha has, does he stay with Ayathabal or does he go out? Is the distance too big for him to go out that time? The both of them got it spot on. Work rate is good from Scotland. It needs to be. McTominay's goal separates the teams. Steve Clark's side would love to make it to half time still in front. We've got three minutes of normal time to go until the break. There's a goal in Cardiff. Wales against Latvia. Chris Coles. Breakthrough for Wales. You can hear the relief at the Cardiff City Stadium. Kiefer Moore with it. Well found. Deep cross. And Moore, the kind of ball he loves to attack, heads it into the bottom corner and gives Wales a one goal lead with four minutes to play until half time. Thanks, Chris Wales, who stunned Croatia with the late equaliser on Saturday. Croatia are playing at the moment. They're away at Turkey and they lead by a goal to nil elsewhere in that group, Group D. Here in Group A, Hamden Park full house every seat taken Scotland leading Spain 1-0 Danny Ceballos of Real Madrid plays the ball back to David Garcia of Osasuna and now to Inigo Martinez of Athletic Bilbao and Spain hoping that they can turn this pressure that's been building into a goal however they've got to take a backward step here Ceballos must retreat and all the way back to Kepa Aretha Balaga Scotland have got two games coming up in June they are against Norway away in Oslo and away uh, against Georgia here at Hampden and then in September there's a friendly against England which I'm sure will be very high profile as well as the away game in Cyprus in this group Do you mentioned a few moments ago if a player comes through the back of you we don't lie down and roll around guess what Hostel is doing now <laughs> exactly the point made there and there's nothing in it we've seen it in a, a slow motion replay there's nothing there and it just shows you the different attitudes for both sides at the moment. Yeah, referee bought it. Free kick to Spain has been taken. Danny Ceballos cross field to Pedro Porro, right hand side. Tried to break into the penalty area, supported by Jeremy Pino. Now back to the edge of the penalty area. Marino's delivery too close to the keeper. Hosselu goes down. He was running in towards the ball. He's now been slamming his fist on the turf. He felt that he was fouled in the penalty area while trying to get onto that cross. The protests continue from the Spanish players close to the referee. But 
but no flinch from the Serbian official. If there was anything untoward, it would be spotted by the video assistant referee, Hoslu, trying to get in around the back of the defender. I couldn't see much wrong with it at the time. I could. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, yeah. not at the time. Not at the time. On the replay, I think there was a whole back of the jersey. And what the referees looked at and thought, was he going to get on the end of it? Answer, no. And by the way, Hosler, because he's thrown himself to the ground about four times so far, mm. I don't think the referee's got a lot of sympathy for him just now. Yeah, when's he going to stop it though? When's the referee going to take control of that situation? Because eventually, I, I know we have VAR and you're hoping that they get them right, but they don't always. They should be putting a stop to that. And his reaction afterwards as well. Hickey takes a throw in for Scotland. Attacking position down the right hand side. They could do with a spell on the attack here just to give the defence a bit of a breather. Danny Ceballos. Just outside the Spanish penalty area, plays a 1 2 with Rodri. Now feeds it into space for Davy Garcia. Christie comes as a high press from Scotland. Robertson up on Poro. That's nearly what led to the opening goal here. But Spain played through the press and now they come on the counter attack. Jeremy Pino on the right hand side, surrounded by Tierney and Robertson, and he loses it. Christie for Scotland now on the halfway line as the fourth official raises his board to indicate two minutes being added on for stoppages at the end of a very satisfactory opening 45 minutes for Steve Clark and for Scotland here at Hampton Park against one of the most illustrious teams in the world. Scott McTominay's goal is the difference and just a couple of minutes now and stoppage time till they go to the changing rooms. Yeah, it does feel like a long couple of minutes though. Scotland have been under a lot of pressure. Maybe a 20 minute period in the middle of the half when it was really particularly difficult more controlled now but you know the Spanish are very very dangerous they've kept it up a high pace so it's uh, yeah, a minute and a half but it's a long minute and a half earlier Georgia and Norway drew 1-1 in this group but uh, this has been a fiery game we've had a few yellow cards already it's got the feeling of the sort of game that we might see a red here is Inigo Martinez Maria Tabel does well along with Sabayas on the edge of the penalty area to keep away from Scotland defenders Danny Sabayas dummies to take a shot now Pedro Porro in the penalty area pulls one back but it's straight at Callum McGregor and Scotland should be able to clear here as Robertson gives it the big boot and Lyndon Dykes is on the charge he's got a run into the penalty area here Dykes for Scotland puts it over the top keeper Rita Balaga is so relieved as Scotland from one end to the other nearly catch Spain cold and they could have had a two goal lead at half time oh what a chance it is just a clearance up the park from Andy Robertson and Lyndon Dykes wins the race but I have to say he makes a run from inside he's having to bend it then the ball's almost always running away from him he can't quite get it under control he just goes to lift it over Kepa and it goes over the bar but it's still a positive for Scotland they're still being able to hit back yeah, to be honest, well, I'll stop now because Spain are going. This is Pino down the other end, supported by Ceballos. And then an overcooked cross. That's not a good delivery at all from the hard-working Pedro Porro. And that will bring the first half to a close. Listen to the Hamden roar. Scotland 1-0 up ahead of Spain. Scott McTominay's goal, which was taken with ruthless efficiency inside seven minutes Scotland have had to ride their luck a little bit defensively since then there's been a yellow card controversially shown to Andy Robertson that might well have been red on another day but Steve Clark's team have made it to the break Kelly and Scotland leads Spain 1-0 Connor, thank you very much. Pat, if there's, a, if there's a game that's guaranteed to get a home crowd going, it's one in which the home side are winning and there's a good bit of needle. Oh, there's, a pl there's plenty of needle in this game. I mean, Stevie Clark said A, believe, but B, you have to compete. No lack of competition here as well. And the, the fans are having a boot at the referee and he hasn't had a great one here. But it's not an easy game to referee. I mean, it, it, the Spaniards have... They'll feel as if they've been kicked all over the place because it's been such a robust performance from the Scotland players as well, but they're trying to make the most of it. Look, that's secondary. It's been a good game of football. I mean, a, a, a tempo that I've really enjoyed. A good number of chances. I think Spain have had the more chances, but Scotland's chances have been superb. A, one that will score from, and that one just before the end there, when Dykes runs. I mean, he's 50 yards there, and he still kind of keeps his composure at the end. Enough so to clip it over Kepa Aruta Balaga when he's coming out. I feel really sorry for him. Because had he scored that one, that would have been one of the great, memorable goals of Scottish history.
it, the chances that both sides have created, including the one that, that led to Scotland's goal in the first half, James, have been exactly the type of chances you'd expect both sides to create, where Spain have had periods of control of the game, but Scotland have been able to, to carve opportunities out for themselves at the other side. Yeah, yeah, you would say that. I think Spain have dominated the ball and they've used it very well to, to gain that territory and, and almost get Scotland back into their box. The problem they've had is even when they're getting on the end of the crosses they're at full stretch or they're under pressure and the Scotland chances you know the last one is a long ball up the park but I'm going to give Andy Robertson a bit of credit here and say that it was a long pass he's playing that for Lyndon Dykes to go and try and compete which he does but the the goal Scotland scores win the ball through pressure then it's that bit of quality and composure so yeah Scotland Scotland have done well Spain have dominated the ball as we expect but I mean apart from the one that's off, off the crossbar the headers the chances have not been that many for Spain so I think Steve Clark will be delighted with how that game's gone in the first half Steve Clark may well be delighted Roddy with that first half for Scotland but you get the sense he might just be happy at half time coming down so that everybody can just take the heat out of this game yes we, it's been said three or four times that we feel a red card could be on the on the cards here and uh, that's the way it is I, a couple of things we haven't mentioned one thing that I did notice in the open in the goal was that uh, Porro slipped and I want he, he wasn't being physically manhandled at that point and I wonder I must say whether or not the pitch was once again being instrumental and the other uncertain area of course that we had was Angus Gunn especially when he had to deal with that mighty looping pass back but since then he stood up to everything the Spaniards have thrown yeah the pitch may well have had a bit, a bit of giving it and that towards the end of the, the game against Cyprus and that's something we may be looking for ahead of this game against Spain but as things stand Scotland are 1-0 up at half time at Hamden Wales in action in Cardiff they're up against Latvia here's Chris Coles same scoreline here Kelly Wales 1 Latvia nil. 40 minutes of Welsh frustration until Kiefer Moore's header met by euphoric cheers from this sold out crowd Dan James deep cross Moore's downward header huge relief for the home side given Wales are in a game here they certainly deserve the lead good chances prior to that for Harry Wilson and Nico Williams but Latvia have threatened Marcus Urs with their best opportunity a volley from a corner kept out by Danny Ward Wales will hope to make this more comfortable in the second half they lead Latvia 1-0 at the break Chris thank you very much England's under 21s are in action at Craven Cottage they're up against Croatia and Henry Moran is watching half time Croatia lead by goal to nil that goal scored by Martin Buterina curling a fine free kick into the top corner after a foul by debutant Rico Lewis England have been the better of the two sides without necessarily creating any real clear opportunities we can expect a lot of changes in the second half huge substitute bench and uh, no question England perhaps will need to if they're looking to find that goal and that equaliser England under 21s nil Croatia won Henry thank you very much elsewhere in League 1 Exeter and Barnsley are drawing one all in League 2 it's goalless between Wimbledon and Walsall and Crawley trail Grimsby by a goal to nil we'll be back at Hamden for the second half of Scotland against Spain we'll keep you up to date with all the other matches that are taking place this evening and we'll hear from Steve Bunce on Anthony Joshua's fight against Jermaine Franklin after the BBC News with Jill McKenzie. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Thank you. Good evening. Police in Northern Ireland say they're working relentlessly to lower the terrorism threat level after it was raised by MI5 today. The security service says the risk has moved from substantial to severe, meaning an attack is highly likely. Last month, dissident Republicans tried to murder a senior detective in Oma. These people are in Belfast. It's just idiots that are just trying to cause trouble. Everyone here has grew up around that there and they've no, they know where to stay away from and they know where to go to really, don't you? So I think it's good that it's taken seriously but at the same token it's nowhere near as bad as yeah. it used to be. Scotland's Finance Secretary Kate Forbes is leaving the Scottish Government after her defeat in the SNP leadership race. The winner, Hamza Youssef, was elected First Minister in a vote in Holyrood this afternoon. Our Scotland correspondent is James Cook. Already, the First Minister's top team is taking shape. In, Shona Robertson promoted to Deputy First Minister. Out, controversially, Mr Youssef's leadership rival Kate Forbes, who turned down a painful demotion to the post of Rural Affairs Secretary. A reminder that governing and reuniting his party will be hard. 
Prince Harry claims he was kept out of discussions in the royal family about the possibility of taking legal action against newspapers for phone hacking. He told the High Court he only started talking to a lawyer when he began dating Meghan Markle and defamatory stories were published. He and other high-profile figures are accusing the Daily Mail of gathering information unlawfully. Associated Newspapers denies the allegations. Police in Tennessee say the shooter who attacked a Christian primary school in Nashville yesterday had bought seven guns legally. Audrey Hale, who was a former pupil, shot dead six people, including three children. President Biden has renewed calls for Congress to take action on gun violence. And hundreds of thousands of demonstrators have marched through Paris and other French cities in protest at President Macron's decision to raise the retirement age to 64. Police fired tear gas at protesters in the French capital. The Albert Park Circuit, longitude and latitude 144.9, 5, 1, 0, 3, 5 degrees east, 37.8, 5, 0, 1 degrees south, 3.280 miles in length, 14 turns, F1, live race commentary from the Australian Grand Prix, Sunday morning from 5.45, on 5 lines, Sergio Perez wins from pole position in Saudi Arabia. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sport with Kelly Cates. Second half commentary coming up from Hampden, where Scotland lead Spain by a goal to nil at half time. After three defeats in his last five fights, Anthony Joshua will return to the ring on Saturday against American Jermaine Franklin. Joshua has a new team behind him, headed by coach Derek James, and has based his training camp in Texas. Yeah, I don't have to change too much, but what you do change is like uh, the way you communicate with someone. You get to learn about how people are. Some people are reserved. Some people are, mm. you know, they're the type of things. And I think connecting with someone that you work with, imagine going to the office every day with someone that you just don't get along with. It's a nightmare. Yeah. And you go to the office with someone that you actually like, you have a little laugh with, you get along with, work can get done, the day goes by quick. So yeah, it, that's the thing. And did you connect with Derek quick soon? Like, did you, did you have a feeling like the first day, this is... I, I'm quite, I'm quite reserved, but Derek's cool, man. I mean, Derek kicked off and he's like, he's cool himself. He's reserved, but he's like open. I'm reserved, but I'm open. Yeah, we're, we're quite similar, I'd say, in that sort. That was Anthony Joshua talking to Steve Bunce, who joins us now. Bunce, a new trainer for Joshua, away in Texas. And does that take him away from the noise and the, and the circus that can follow him around? It absolutely, it does tell you. You've hit the nail right on the head, as the cliche goes. That means he can walk to the shop. That means he can run. That means he can go out. That means he can relax. That means he doesn't have to send someone into the gym first to see if there's paparazzi waiting for him or a million kids. No sweat, you know. He can relax, and he has relaxed. And him and Derek James have got on. But, but here's the tricky thing. It's his third trainer in three fights. Three consecutive new voices in your ear in three fights. That's, a, that's an awful lot to take in. Yeah, you, you had a good chat with him in, in fight week sort of leading up to this, this huge fight for him. So did he give the impression that he's getting mixed messages or did he seem as though all these, these changes have had a positive effect on him? No, because I'll tell you for why. In the first losing fight against Usyk, there were five voices in the corner. In the second losing fight against Usyk, it had been reduced to three. That's still too many. This man, Derek James, he's a low-key guy, a, strange, a nice low-key character, trains good fighters, was a good boxer himself in the 90s, and he rules the gym and the corner with an iron fist, with an iron rod, with a whip. No one else talks. The only voice you hear is Derek James, and AJ will love that, love that. He has to get it right, though. Just put into context how big this fight is for him. You lose this fight and you start to injure your legacy, but more than that, you injure your pocket. And fighters are prize fighters and the prize is money. If he wins, he sets up something, I don't know, maybe Tyson Fury, 90,000 or 100,000 at Wembley. Not a lot hanging over his head. Not a lot of pressure when he walks out. No pressure at all. Do you think that might be on then if he, if he wins this one, the, the Fury-Joshua fight? 
I've just spoken to my pal Pinocchio, and he said, I can't possibly <laughs> tell you, Bugs, whether that fight's on. Well, how dare you ask me? Of course it's on. It'll be off tomorrow, but it's on right now. That's the way it stands right at the, at the moment. <laughs> what about the, the fight between Conor Bannon and Chris Eubank Jr.? Might that one happen? You know what? I've been here in Abu Dhabi, or, or Abu Dhabi for June the 3rd. I've been hearing it for about four or five weeks. And generally in my business, if a rumour comes out and it vanishes, it was a rumour. And, and, and the other, the other the flip side of that is if a rumour comes out and it has legs and it survives, and you hear it from different people, not people that invent things, then it starts to become a little bit sudden. I'm going to be speaking to Eddie Hearn tomorrow, and I'm going to have, I'm going to have, to, have to ask him, because I've got a terrible feeling it is on. That's going to create a big problem and a bit of a dilemma across the sport. Bunty, for now, thank you very much. Pleasure as always. And there's a special podcast every day in the build up to fight. You can download it at BBC Sounds. Look for all day boxing. And of course, there'll be live commentary from 10 o'clock on Saturday night on Five Live. Euro 2022 winning England captain Leah Williamson is top of the Women's Hour Power List for 2023. It's not just for her success on the pitch, but also for her work alongside Arsenal and England teammate Lotta Rubin Moy in lobbying the government for girls to enjoy equal access to sport in schools. I think that equal access is really important. That's an easy change. You know, um, you've obviously got term and a half or whatever left of the year I think then when people are planning for next uh, in the summer and for next year's curriculum I think it should be equal I'd, that should be the first thing I think that we change and then I think the the perception and then the you know we, we have a responsibility to then push those girls to try new things and I always say if a girl chooses not to play football mm -hmm. then it's good she's had a choice in the first place I, I'll take that any day instead of somebody choosing for her um, you know hopefully we'll reach out to the schools and really you know, explain the benefits to them as well um, for anybody that's maybe not so much of a believer as we are. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it'll be the hardest thing in the world to, to implement, hopefully. But we won't see the real change, what, 5, 10, 15 years maybe. England boss Serena Wiegmann said Aston Villa goalkeeper Hannah Hampton had sorted out personal issues to earn a recall to the squad for the Brazil and Australia games. Hampton hasn't been included since England won Euro 2022. She was reportedly dropped for a poor attitude. She is back in the latest 25-player squad. And you can listen to England against Brazil at a sold-out Wembley Stadium next Thursday on Five Live Sport. The International Olympic Committee has recommended that Russian and Belarusian athletes are allowed to compete under a neutral flag, but has yet to make a decision on Paris 2024. The recommendation only extends to individual athletes and not to teams. There uh, have been plenty of people getting in touch on social media ahead of the second half between Scotland and Spain. Skiatara on Twitter says the ref has to, drop, uh, to stop the Spanish diving. It's getting out of hand and it's certainly been a difficult first half for the referee, but Scotland lead it by a goal to nil. Roddy for Scythe is part of our team here at Hamden this evening. Roddy for Scotland in the in the second half of, of this game. It's going to be a big one. Steve Clark will have been pleased with certain things that he's seen in the first half from Scotland. What do the home team have to do in the second half? Above all, you feel that they have to keep cool. There were three or four moments in the first half when you did feel, and particularly when Robertson shoved his shoulder into the face of Porto, that the red card might be the likely consequence. Happily for Scotland, happily for the Liverpool and Scotland captain, it didn't work out that way. But that would be the sort of thing that would really put the Scots back against the wall. And I would imagine that half-time Steve Platt said to them, look, you have to be committed, but not over so. And it does look as though Porro might not be appearing for the second half of this game. Yes, and I mentioned earlier that he slipped not just once at the goal, but uh, later in the second uh, uh, in the second period of the first half. And I looked at him and saw that he was moving a little bit awkwardly. So I rather fancy that that, and perhaps we're going to be talking about the pitch again, has cost him his services. The noise will tell you that the Scotland team are out for the second half of this match here at Hamden. Scotland 1-0 up against Spain. Nibby for the next 45 minutes. James McFadden, Pat Nevin and Conor McNamara. It's just a great atmosphere here. I hope this uh, this party vibe is coming through wherever you're listening to our commentary. Even Kelly's dancing. <laughs> right, teams are back out. Nico Williams is going to come on for Spain and so too Denny Carvajal. So two changes for Luis de la Fuente. The Spanish coach who's decided that things need to be 
freshened up a little bit for him. Danny Carvajal, we know all about him. Real Madrid right back, so he'll slot in where Pedro Porro has been playing. And uh, Nico Williams, who is the brother of Inaki Williams, the player who plays for Ghana, he will come on in place of Mikel Oyetabo. So the Athletic Bilbao forward coming in to try and lend a bit more spice to the attack. No changes for Scotland, who will begin this second half as they began the evening earlier on. Pat Nevin. Yeah, I think Williams will go on the right-hand side. Maybe Pino goes over to the left-hand side. He's got great pace, Williams. A skillful player. Um, but he's got a bit of a job if he's going to get by Andy Robertson and Kieran Tierney down there. But it's a very positive move, and, and we know Carvajal wants to get forward at every opportunity. So back underway, five live from the BBC. We're live on BBC Sounds 2 and on the live text commentary pages of the BBC Sport website. Qualifiers for Euro 2024 are Scotland about to start this group with back-to-back -back victories, having won 3-0 against Cyprus on Saturday. They are 1-0 in front against Spain, but only half the job is done so far. First touch for Denny Carvajal since coming on. There's no Barcelona players in this Spanish team. There's now Carvajal and Dani Ceballos of Real Madrid. As David Garcia rolls the ball to Enrico Martinez. Spain playing from left to right now in the second period as we look down. Red shirts with the yellow trim. Scotland in their navy and white. Rodri of Manchester City gives it back out to Danny Carvajal on the right hand side. As, uh, now, for the first time, Williams gets a chance to try and cross on the right, but he runs into Andy Robertson, who repels him back, doesn't quite win possession though. Spain have it with Rodri, left-footed shot, bounced up nicely for Angus Gunn, that could have been awkward. It bounced in front of him, but sat up into his gloves. Too, too far back there, William. far too far back. Two central midfield players are right on the heel, uh, their heels are right on the toes of our centre-backs. Can't live, allow players to have shots from 20, 25 yards. No, and I think that you can see Carvajal coming on to bring that experience. He's feeding the ball to Williams, he's just backing it up. Porro, we know, is, wants to get forward, more of a wing-back, wants the attack. So I, I think that's a smart move by Spain to bring him on and, and bring that experience onto the pitch. A reminder of how they line up, Angus gone in goal for Scotland, Porteous, Hanley and Tierney the back three, Hickey and Robertson the wing backs, McTominay, McGregor, McGinn and Christian midfield, Lyndon Dykes who's on a yellow card leads the line up front, there's Dykes in possession but his pass is behind John McGinn, groans from the Scotland fans, Spain team in just a moment but they're attacking on the left hand side here, and he's Ceballos, gives it back into his own half, Inigo Martinez to David Garcia and now over the halfway line comes Spain Carvajal again, number 20 on his back first touch takes him infield of Ryan Christie Porro who was full of energy was really involved in that first half but Danny Carvajal coming on gives a little touch of class to that right hand side for Spain looks very comfortable already here's Ryan Christie 15 yards outside his own penalty area taken down by Marino free kick to Scotland so the Spain team Kepa Arita Balaga in goal Carvajal now at right back Garcia Martinez in the middle Gaia is the left back in the heart of the midfield Rodri of Manchester City and Marino of Real Sociedad and then it's Nico Williams wide right Jeremy Pino Danny Ceballos and Hosselu the man who got two goals in his debut against Norway on Saturday leading the line if you weren't with us in the first half Hosselu well he went down a lot his most positive action in the game was a header that was touched onto the crossbar looking to make it three goals inside his second cap for his country Porteous with a strong dominant header out of defence for Scotland has fallen nicely for Christie good work from Lyndon Dykes to provide it for Christie who then goes down challenged by Gaia it's got to be a free kick will the referee reach for a card even he comes across free kick to Scotland crossing position on the right hand side no card it's brilliant from Ryan Christie because the first one he takes a touch he thinks about going down he just slows down a little bit draws in the defender knocks it knows the contact's coming it's brilliant play from Ryan Christie again is up the park as well and uh, the Scotland fans are screaming for a yellow card I think that's just a foul and uh, the assistant referee's over there you can see it as well Ryan Christie who came off the bench against Cyprus here on Saturday in the starting team tonight Steve Clark has tactically judge things very well so far long way to go of course John McGinn stands over this free kick it's not a shooting position crossing position on the right hand side near the sideline 10 yards for the byline 
McGinn with his left foot is going to send this in curling in swinger good delivery Williams was able to head it out and then on the follow up Ryan Christie didn't catch it very well and it comes off his instep and well wide of the target in the end goal kick to Spain and Aretha Balaga still Scotland won Spain nil yeah, just for a moment there, and the ball before it was crossed in, once again, Kieran Tierney hauled over in the box. I mean, he's making a nuisance of himself, but it's one of those ones, if the ball comes into his area and they look at him VAR, Spain could be in trouble there. Uh, this week's Five Live Boxing with Steve Bunce comes highly recommended. You can listen to that podcast via BBC Sounds. 1-0 to Scotland, early stages of the second half at Hamden, throw in for Spain. Uh, their coach, Luis de la Fuente, is down there wearing a padded jacket. Good success for the Spanish underage teams won the Euros at under 19 and under 21. As uh, it will be Spain who hold on to possession here on the halfway line all night. They've been trying to play it at their tempo, but it's proving difficult for them. This is Williams back to Danny Carvajal now in field to David Garcia. Spain have possession, no real high press from Scotland here. Steve Clark's team are happy to wait until Spain get deep into their half before they try to uh, do anything. By the way, uh, there has been a change of official over the break. Sandro Scherer, the Swiss referee in the first half, is now doing fourth official duties. And Lucas Feindrecht, who was the fourth official, is on the field. Here comes Tierney on the attack for Scotland. Great run this. Delivers the left foot across it. Back to the I mean, Tierney, phenomenal off that left-hand side, flying away. He thought he's going to get caught. He's not going to stop. And the brilliance of what Scotland do, because they've got Robertson and Tierney, they spell it. This time, it's Tierney. He goes, and he goes, and he goes again. Puts a good ball in. It's still a tough finish when it goes to McTominay, but Faddy, wow. Oh, it's incredible. Kieran Tierney is breaking down the left-hand side. He has a look up. He sees Lyndon Dykes at the back post. It's a difficult cross. It looks like he's going to put it in. He just draws in Carvajal, strengths it past him, gets to the byline. It's not a great ball in. It's cleared to the edge of the box. And Scott McTominay arriving right on time. Left foot, first time, beyond Kepa. What a start to this second half for Scotland. Connor, you called it right. Scotland were sitting back. They weren't going and pressing and chasing it, forcing that mistake. When they do, they break at speed. It is a brilliant goal again from Scotland. And no surprise, down the left-hand side once again. Before Saturday, Scott McTominay had only ever scored once for his country. He's now got four goals in four days. Scotland's number four is living the dream right now. And both finishes cultured touches he doesn't blast it he picks his spot and he finds the back of the net and Spain are in trouble now do you know they've got a big problem Fanny they're scared now of the breaks they have to push on they have to push on Lyndon Dyke showed that he's got the pace of him as well so Scotland are in a brilliant position at the moment here's McGinn hustling tigerishly battling for possession in the midfield and playing it in front of Hickey who's got scorching outside him on the right hand side Marino comes in with a tackle and it goes out for a Scotland throw but these must be the games players love to be in none of these Scotland players will be feeling tired despite the endeavour they're putting in because they're riding on a wave down there now not now not now and I, I just I don't know for sure but I'm going to add to your four I think it's from four shots he scored yeah. as well <laughs> that's the way to do it that's a strike rate Erling Haaland to be proud of he's he got six Mac goals Dominic. from that <laughs> emerging as a potent goal-scoring we weapon you know you can fluke it once or twice but when you get four goals in two games you are on a roll right we're going to get an update from one of the other games taking place at the moment England under 21s at Craven Cottage hosting Croatia tonight another goal for Henry Moran and yet three wins on the spin for England's under 21s but they're two goals to nil down here a penalty given away by Leicester's Luke Thomas converted by Dion Belgio 
past substitute goalkeeper Josh Griffiths. England under 21s nil, Croatia 2. Thanks, Henry. Scotland leading Spain 2 nil here. The atmosphere genuinely electric in Hamden. What about Cardiff City Stadium tonight? Wales hosting Latvia. Here's Chris Coles. Wales would love a second goal as well, Connor. Leading Latvia by one goal to nil. They've come close to a second. Nico Williams again from range. Good save. Pavel Stein balls. And Harry Wilson, a volley on the turn, but straight at the goalkeeper. Wales one, Latvia nil. Here's Hickey on the right-hand side for Scotland trying to take on Gaia. Gaia gets an important touch. And in, uh, it goes out for a throw-in to Scotland but body language from Spain isn't great at the moment they have been thunderstruck here by Scotland with those two Scott McTominay goals and it is deafeningly loud here it's incredible and the players have got a huge lift from that goal the energy has risen incredibly and that rendition of the flower of Scotland <laughs> wow I just had to, sorry, I had to take my headphones off and just soak that up yeah the crowd have been singing flower of Scotland Thousands of the supporters have turned on the little torch on their mobile phones. I mean, I know Ed Sheeran's in town tonight. It, it feels like we're at the wrong venue here. Maybe it's a bit too early for this level. There's 10 minutes played in the second half. Scotland still have work to do, but what a foundation to do it upon a two-goal lead. But look at how they've reacted to the second goal, Scotland. They're up, they're closing down, they're chasing, they're... They know that the Spanish are really panicked and worried just now, and every tackle's a biting tackle. They're closing the, they hate the Spanish are hating this just now, and that rendition that you're talking about, Florida Scotland, that has lifted the players. That has really helped. Throw in for Scotland, far side of the pitch from us. Ryan Portis, prepare it to take it. It's midway into Spanish territory. Scotland playing right to left as we look down. Uh, it's thrown towards John McLean. Uh, again, who falls to his knees, pushes the back free kick to Scotland. 10-12 yards for the byline, crossing position on the right-hand side. And Spain have made the two changes at the break, but look all at sea, they are about to make another change. Iago Aspas, one-time briefly Liverpool player, is going to come on. He's a Celta Vigo forward. And he will come on. For Marino, yeah. And Marino's a lovely player, isn't he? But not had that great effect in the second half. So they take off the central midfielder, to bring on an attacker to win this game now Spain need to score three times they scored three against Norway at the weekend they did get late goals too but Scotland absolutely on top of the moment McGinn waits for the signal for the Swiss referee to take the free kick here it comes he goes for goal he's hit the crossbar nearly comes down from McTominay who's on a hat-trick now but he couldn't pull the trigger and Spain get it away but McGinn tried to catch Aretha Balaga unawares there Christie's attempt to cross from the left-hand side repelled by Danny Carvajal Spain get it back again Rodri through the midfield to Iago Aspas who's just come on and then back to Rodri once again as Scotland fall back into a defensive formation what an effort from John McGinn the fans are singing his song and I think he's taken taking inspiration from that but he's thought I'm just going to have a shot they're singing my song good timing what a clip that would be if it went into the back of the net Kepa is scrambling to keep that out of the back of the net what an effort it is from the angle he hit here's uh, Nico Williams not to be confused with the Welsh counterpart Gaia pulls it back chance for Aspas canting it out between his feet diving in was Porteous he's hurt himself and it's a free kick to Scotland brave defending Ryan Porteous throwing his body in the way of danger there and he, he is in distress he's wriggling on the ground inside the penalty area his teammates are coming over patting him on the back very important brave block to hold on to Scotland's two-goal lead I think he's put his whole body in there He's dived to the floor, there's a, actually, he's made the tackle and he's twisted his, his ankle. Those are horrible ones and you see, if sometimes you feel incredible pain and they go away, other times they go, don't go away. I think he's got away with it. That's a brilliant block, it really is. We're just getting a chance to see that free kick again from John McGinn. Wow, it is so close. It actually comes off the bar, it's so close. To take it from that angle, you had one about five minutes ago and you were saying, it's not a shooting business, it's not a shooting angle. Yeah, exactly. And he takes that one on. Incredible stuff. That could have been 3-0 for Scotland. It really would have been all over. Scotland 2, Spain 0. Hampton Park absolutely thoroughly enjoying what's happening here in front of our eyes. As Lyndon Dykes puts pressure on David Garcia, who puts the ball out for a throw-in. Throw into Scotland 
left-hand side as they come forward and there's no let-up from a steely-eyed Steve Clark. Scotland at the foot and the throat and he will not want it to be lifted. Is he the calmest person in here tonight? <laughs> Stevie Clark, he looks at, but yeah, I'm not sure camera. he will be inside. <laughs> I know he's like, he holds it and he holds it. Then yeah. he gets in a quiet <laughs> moment, he goes mad. Tierney takes a throw in for Scotland. Dykes trying to turn the defender. Garcia does well. Ball had gone out of play though before he hooked in the cross to the byline. But Lyndon Dykes, who's put himself around, he's got that yellow card in the first half, but his physical presence He's, uh, he's been a, a pester and a bother for Spain this evening as Rodri comes through the midfield. He's not used to losing many games. He's got Danny Ceballos with him on the left-hand side. The Real Madrid player makes up good ground, almost to the edge of Scotland's penalty area. Gaia's delivery was good, but Grant Hanley was back there for Scotland. He jumps, wins the header, and Scotland should clear it away here. McGinn, oh, back to Tierney. That's not great. Tierney's got to stretch to get himself out of trouble. Scotland nearly with an unforced error on the edge of the penalty area. They get away with it. But having worked so hard to establish this lead, they would hate to make a silly mistake like that to allow Spain back into it. Rodri has possession after a quickly taken throw. 20 yards outside the penalty area. Danny Ceballos to his left-hand side. Now a cross comes in with good pace on it from... Jeremy Pino on the far side, but it's headed out away again, and a throw into Spain on the attack of the left in our play. Do you know what? John McGinn did give the ball away there, but he's trying to play it out, and I like that. I'm okay with that. It wasn't an easy ball on. I don't even think it was a hoof off the part on. He's trying to play it out, just got a little bit unlucky. If you're just joining our coverage here on Five Live, there's a lot of noise in Hampton. This could be about to become a very special night. Scotland, who haven't beaten Spain since 1984, when Kenny Daglish was amongst the goal scorers, could they be about to claim an enormous scalp in this group? As Williams comes on the attack for Spain down the right-hand side, pulls it back for Danny Carvajal. Good delivery, but good header won by Porteous, who's hobbling. He's still a little bit sore down there from that challenge a moment ago but he's got the ball away Scotland as a group all step out of the penalty area as Spain come again it's Danny Ceballos left hand side of the midfield as Spain come forward gets it back again from Gaia Rodri immediately finding McGregor in his face so he must retreat Spain desperately speaking some space down there as Garcia gives it to Carvajal on the right hand side good ball for Williams into the penalty area pulls it back best chance in a long time for Spain but the attempt from Iago Aspas goes over the top uh, isn't this really good play from Spain nice patient play Andy Robertson is drawn out to Carvajal Christie and Tierney get a bit confused as to who's to take Williams he finds himself in space it's fired across with his right foot not not, not so sure it could have been a, a better opportunity because it was fired come off the thighs and thankfully over the bar but this is a this is a crucial period for Scotland because it is a 2-0 lead and it can be a dangerous one they have to make sure they don't don't be giving up too many simple or easy opportunities for Spain get a hold of the ball keep frustrating them by those fouls that we've seen McGinn and Christie winning and try and frustrate Spain as much as possible so the Spanish coach Luis de la Fuente this only his second game in charge comfortable win over Norway on Saturday but he'll be feeling the pressure now having taken over from Luis Enrique 2-0 down away at Scotland for Spain at the moment and well, controversially he made eight changes to his starting lineup changing a winning team so far it hasn't worked for Spain but remember it was a winning team that didn't play that well so I don't think he was absolutely delighted with him I'm not sure he was taking Scotland's easy by the way the referee's having a dig at Scotland for wasting time I don't think that was wasting time that's <laughs> I think a normal just, amount of time there's a preventative measure there just don't even think about starting to waste time was that signal from replacement referee Lucas Fandrick, whose night has become a lot more exciting than he thought it was going to be. He thought he was just going to be fourth official holding up the board for the substitutions. He's now on the pitch for the second half after the referee who was in charge of the first period, Sandro Scherer, who probably couldn't deal with any more of the Pedro Parro stuff, decided he wasn't going to come out for the second half. I hope he's had a good warm-up. Yes, yeah, exactly. My thoughts as well. I was just thinking that too. This is Demi Ceballos. Spain have possession, but finding it very difficult to get in behind well-drilled, well-organised Scotland defence which becomes a flat back five when the opponents have possession Williams down the right hand side, that's a great ball from Danny Carvajal but Williams prowled all the way to the byline by Andy Robertson and Robertson and Tierney, they're enjoying that doubling up, completely outnumbering Williams there and the ball goes out, not for a corner but for a goal kick Was it a goal kick or was it offside? I think he's maybe giving a shout for offside though 
<laughs> and of course Gunny doesn't know exactly what to do he has no idea where the ball should be placed either that or he does and he's just taking his time yeah, there is not Angus gone on his second international cap is he about to get a second clean sheet the big, the big, con the big problem here now is Stevie Clark he knows his players will be getting tired he knows he has to make changes at some point you know but what are the right ones to make you don't want to make a change that disrupts the flow because the flow has been quite good in the second half he's chatting down there with Stephen Naismith and John Carver Steve Clark in their wildest dreams did they think it would be this comfortable on 64 minutes Scotland leading Spain 2-0 both goals by Scotland comfortable, Tom, lad, you're comfortable, comfortable. <laughs> comfortable lead 2-0 is a comfortable lead this is this is the, the impartiality that the BBC are bringing to this broadcast. Very saying. excited, Scott's beside me here. Yeah, once again, Scotland have pressed a little bit high there and got the ball back, and that's been one of the real joys of Scotland's performance tonight. You know, they've got well, you could argue they've got both goals up, but certainly the first goal up, and they look the most dangerous. We're in that breaking area, pretty high up the front field. I think as he tucked himself in with his hot water bottle and his teddy bear last night, if Steve Clark had thought two up after 65 minutes he absolutely would have taken that with bells on here comes Scotland looking for a third Andy Robertson's cross comes off Danny Carvajal once his arms raised it's got out for a corner corner to Scotland left hand side yeah I, I think I claimed that as a fan there Con. <laughs> it, it looked like it come off his maybe his elbow which is stuck by his side but still in that mode of claiming for everything <laughs> it was a harsh one it would have been a harsh one but once again when Scotland do get the ball high up the field there if it's the left hand side you know they're going to be incredibly dangerous doesn't matter who it is it, it could be any one of the players on the left hand side there will get across him two goal here is Scott McTominay to take the corner sends it in low and hard and they try to flick it under the front post and down goes Tierney nothing doing with the referee chance for Ryan Christie but he shot off his right boot is well away from the target and out it goes for a goal kick to Spain 2-0 and they're going to make a change again here, which uh, it tells you they're, <laughs> they're worried, aren't they? Speaking the Spanish. And, On uh, comes Borja Iglesias of Real Betis for what is only his second cap, a player who was linked with a move to West Ham, I remember, at the start of the season. So Iglesias has come on to lead the line, replacing Hosselu. Here's a chance for Scotland McGinn's ball into the penalty area. Christie collides with Aretha Balagan. That's going to be a free kick to the goalkeeper. Aretha Balaga seems to get up there and then falls back down again. I can't believe he's wasting time. Wouldn't be the, <laughs> the brightest thing for him to do. I think he was trying to get Ryan Christie boot, but it's a challenge he has to go for. Yeah, yeah he's absolutely right. Uh, ref well done, referee. Um, he's actually done all right. This second referee, the substitute referee, seems to have controlled the game a little bit better. Midway through the second half, Rodri of Manchester City tries to come forward, challenged by Ryan Christie. Tackle from behind, free kick to Spain. It's been a good, set to circle. good six or seven minutes, isn't it, for Scotland? Just slowing the game down, now, making a few tackles and not allowing Spain to get a control of it. Free kick to Spain, Lyndon Dykes with the ball of his feet, and a frustrated Danny Carvajal came charging in to try and get the ball to take the free kick quicker, and he has pushed Dykes out of the way, and Carvajal's been shown a yellow card for that, unnecessary. But it sums up the frustration that Spain are feeling. Scotland, who've shown such great curves of improvement under Steve Clark the new contract he's been given this could be one of the best results of his tenure Rodri on the edge of the penalty here takes it down but can't find any room and then down goes Christina free kick to Scotland and this will leave some pressure not for the first time of the game three different Scotland players all down at the same time yeah, Tierney was taken down off the ball and <laughs> Kieran's actually looks more concerning there and he didn't see the, the tackle coming in behind him it will be A of a very sore ankle B been incredibly clever. Yeah, I like how they all went down in unison as well. It's like, right, if you, I'm going to waste time, are you going to waste time? Yeah. To be honest, <laughs> I've just seen that replay of it. He's been kicked on the foot. It's not a, a twist, he'll be fine. Scotland are unbeaten in their last eight home games. If it stays like this, it'll be six wins in a row. Hampton Park is becoming a fortress again. 2 0 up against Spain here. As Aretha Balaga sends the free kick long, uh, sorry, Gunn sends it long into Spanish territory. And then Hickey retreats back and from the halfway line passes it back to the Norwich City goalkeeper once again. Another direct clearance straight down the middle is too far in front of all of his teammates and carries through to Angus Scott. Aretha Balaga, I keep mixing up the two goalkeepers. I know, but 
the thing about um, Gunn, he, I don't think he's necessarily passed it out once to any of these defenders. Everything's been launched, but it's worked. So here comes Spain. He's got a lot of attacking players on the pitch now. Gaia to the byline right hand side, but the ball goes out. The challenge on him. And uh, colliding into the advertising boarding is Hickey, who's coming up it, holding his ear corner to Spain. I think it's more he's been thumped with the ball. And he's just rolled on yeah. the pitch. Well, I can understand the Spanish frustration here. So Hickey was hurt by the advertisers, has rolled back onto the pitch now to be injured. Uh, in other words, to hold up play ahead of the corner. And Spain are going crazy, saying, you can't come back on and then say you're hurt. I wonder what the Spanish players would have done in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the manual of that is written in Spanish, yeah. I think possibly about half ten the Scotland players have went, well, okay, you're doing it, we're going to do exactly the same. It's, it is killing a little bit of time. It's great maturity, though. We, sp we speak about his age, right? It's, it's brilliant maturity. Yeah, but if it was Spanish, you wouldn't be saying it. Yeah, <laughs> but he's not. He's <laughs> Scottish. He's I'm all for it. Yeah. Corner's been taken. Icky's OK. Spain have it after a, a short taken corner. Now the delivery and Rodri's the target here. He got his header, but McGinn was close to him and he couldn't get any power on it. And it's saved by Angus Gott. Scotland still lead 2 0. Rodri had a good headed chance in the first half. This one, <laughs> by the way, they're all shouting at the player behind Gunn. And all the Scotland players are screaming and shouting at him, saying, Don't put the ball down here. Panto season, clever. he's behind you as uh, Borja Iglesias was trying to lurk. Long clearance by Gunn again, straight down the middle. Lyndon Dykes has done enough. And now McGinn encourages Dykes to run after it into the penalty area. He's blazed across it. Too firm for Ryan Christie. Robertson chases after it. In any event, flag is raised on the far side. Lyndon Dykes was offside. So a free kick to Spain. And the clock ticks on. 20 minutes plus the stoppages to go. Well, Scotland are going to make some of those changes and certainly need energy in that midfield. They're understandable. They'll do that. Probably Christie coming off, I would guess. Um, um, and those fresh legs are necessary, but you just hope for Scotland's sake it doesn't imbalance the team in any way because so far in the second half, this um, this tidal wave you're expecting from the Spanish hasn't quite happened yet. Uh, Kenny McLean, another Norwich City pair getting ready to come on. As uh, Spain have it in the midfield, Aspas is sort of playing the number 10 role since his introduction. But he can't feed a ball through to Inglesias here. Spain trying to come down the left. In behind Hickey goes Jeremy Pino. Close to the corner flag that Spain attacked. They need at least two goals here to take anything from Hampden tonight, Spain. This is Danny Ceballos trying to twist and turn, but completely swarmed by opponents. And he's won the free kick, and then he sort of sarcastically applauds the referee for that. Free kick for Spain, crossing position wide on the left. And Hickey's, I think Hickey's tiring a lot bit just now. I mean, he was shoved over, over the, after the ball went away there, but there's nothing much in that. A very dangerous position now. Scotland not going to make that substitution. No. McLean will wait until after the set piece. Everybody back defending it. All 11 players inside the penalty area for Scotland. This two-goal lead they have to defend now. Here comes the free kick. Danny Ceballos comes off the back of the head of Grant Hanley it's not clear Williams in the penalty area trying to turn but can't get away from Porteous oh he's wriggled through him and eventually though good play from Williams and then he trickles one through the legs of Tierney but straight to the gloves of Angus Gunn Porteous did so well initially but Williams Nico Williams wasn't giving up there and he very nearly created something out of nothing yeah Williams had Porteous exactly where he wanted him he wanted him tight so he could wriggle through it does I felt as though Porteous was taking a risk getting his tight and trying to win the ball just delay it and show him out the way he does brilliantly and then he comes up against Kieran Tierney and there's no way past him and it's just a a, a hit and hope really and it's just so weak into the, the arms of Angus Gunn the last 12 months Spain have only lost one game inside 90 minutes that was their defeat to Switzerland in the Nations League back in September we have a chance of a break there going over the, the ball was kicked up there Christie was absolutely free the ball went beyond them there. That'd have been a chance to take it into the corner. Scott would have loved that. Liam Cooper is going to be coming on as well. I wonder if it might be Ryan Porteous who goes off, who's been 
really putting his body through the wars in the second period. 2-0 Scotland lead. Let's go back to Craven Cottage. How are England under-21s doing against Croatia? Henry Moran. Well, they're two goals down at the moment. Could be three, should be three. Running through around the goalkeeper. No, excellent save from Josh Griffiths, the substitute. Uh, on for this second half. Croatia have been the better of the two sides since the break, but a big chance for Cole Palmer to half the deficit. Tried to take it round the goalkeeper, couldn't do so. And it remains after 73 minutes. England under 21's nil, Croatia two. Yeah, 73 minutes played here as well. And here come the, the Scotland substitutes. So while they make that double change, let's go to Cardiff, Wales, Latvia, Chris Coles. 1-0 leads are rarely comfortable, and this isn't a comfortable lead for Wales. They are still in front. They're still dominant with the ball, but every now and then Latvia create chances. The latest, Vladislav Gukovskis, low shot, well saved by Danny Ward. Wales could really do with the comfort of a second. They still have a one-goal lead, 15 minutes to play. Croatia lead Turkey 2-0 in the other game in that group, Group D. Right, it's Kieran Tierney who's going to go off uh, for Liam Cooper to come on. So the back three now, Porteous Hanley Cooper. And Kenny McLean has, as expected, replaced Ryan Christie. Steve Clark introducing fresh legs for what is going to be a big closing 15 minutes plus the stoppages here. You know, I, I, certainly it's not a tactical thing, that's an injury. Uh, Tierney has not had much first team football, certainly very, very few starts at Arsenal in recent months. And it's a blow for me because when, when he needs to step out into that left back area which is natural to him and it's a 1v1, he's absolutely fine. Well, Liam Cooper has to go and do it now. Just this is a big what we've got left 20 minutes 15 minutes or so he just, he just did it against Williams a moment ago didn't he yeah. I mean the first centre back comes across does Borges but Tierney won't dive in there so you're right it's a big call it's not a positive one but it's nice to have a two goal uh, deficit <laughs> to be able to rely on slightly it's not a nice one for a defender to come on though is it when, you, when you've got that clean sheet and the pressure's on and you're going to have to go into an area you're maybe not as comfortable with and, and you know that Spain are going to throw the kitchen sink that it laid on here so Cooper who hasn't played for Leeds since early February so nearly two months now comes on to try and keep this clean sheet as James McFadden mentioned there 75 minutes on the clock what a night it's been for Steve Clark in Scotland so far 2-0 in front both goals from Scott McTominay similar nature to both of them very well taken goals very calm collected finishes from the Manchester United player flower of Scotland being Sung again with great gusto in Glasgow. Inky black skies overhead. Spain, possession of the halfway line, but really struggling. The one thing I would say, Connor, you mentioned before, they've just had the ball at better play. That's so un-Spanish. But you said a wee while ago, tell us it's a comfortable lead, and we both had a wee snagger, aren't you? To be honest, it's gone, the time's gone by quite quickly in the second half. Which tells me a story. It is a wee bit more comfortable than we were suggesting. It isn't one of the ones you're panicking every minute and looking at the clock every minute. It's not felt like that yet. No, that, that, that second goal has given Scotland a real insurance policy here. Even if Spain are to nick one here, Scotland will still have a lead to protect. And that's where a lot of the comfort comes as Guy has done well on the left hand side for Spain. Gives it in field to Rodri. There's still plenty of quality on the field for Spain if they can get their act together here. Strong challenge by Hickey on the edge of the penalty area, but Spain hold on to the ball. This is Danny Ceballos, 20 yards outside the box. Plays it for Danny Carvajal, difficult one to receive, and Cooper nips it, his first touch, to play the ball forward to Lyndon Dykes. Now it's launched long by McGinn. Robertson's made an excellent run, a long-busting run on the left-hand side, but David Garcia gets there first, and Spain recapture possession. That's brilliant by Garcia. Oh, the pressure he was under. He's come over his shoulder. And of course he's got Robertson hanging right on his back there. That was a brilliant piece of defending. 2-0 Scotland need lead. But Inglésias can't get onto a through ball on the edge of the penalty area. Here is Nico Williams of Athletic Bilbao. He's eighth cap. Pacey wide player on the right hand side for Spain with the sparkling white boots. And he plays a clever ball into Rodri, into the penalty area. It was well tracked by Lyndon Dykes which put him off a little bit. And Scotland get it away. Spain wants a corner. It's not. It is going to be a goal kick and Spain are going to make another change. They're going to bring on the very talented teenager Gavi. Gavi of Barcelona, who was a regular through the World Cup campaign. Bit of a surprise, maybe he wasn't involved from the start tonight. He will come on for the closing stages here and he will replace Real Madrid's Dani Ceballos. 
Yeah, Scotland will be absolutely delighted with that lap back defending. And every defender who makes that sort of tackle, and it was Hanley, wasn't it? Grant Hanley then. Perfect timing. And that just, you know, that hurts if you're a Spain player, doesn't it? Really hurts because you think you've got a good position and it's just smothered. Gavi, who's come on as a very special player. He's still only 18 years of age. He's closing in on 100 senior appearances for Barcelona already. Tonight, he's 19th cap for Spain already. Can he make a difference late on here? And can he make Scotland sweat? Not with a pass like that. David Garcia, too far in front of Danny Carvajal. And that's happened a lot tonight, Patton and James. No, Unforced did. errors, yeah. Spain their own worst enemy at times. Exactly, put a little bit of pressure on them, and that's when Scotland have been intelligent enough to do the right times. I was just laughing at a ball boy there, who's obviously learned not to pull, <laughs> throw the ball back very quickly at this point in time. He's even got the ball boys believing. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, you're right, Scotland have sat and they've been really disciplined in their shape. They're not going chasing the centre backs, they're leaving them on it, they're forcing it wide, and then that's the trigger for them to go and press. Spain are trying to force that pass because there's no way through the middle of Scotland where ideally they want to go, they can't find a way through and they're putting a bit too much on the pass, forcing it a little bit too much and they're forcing errors and, and that is a delight for Scotland but still a long way to go in this game. Just over 10 minutes plus the stoppages with an image on our screen there of some Spanish fans, girls draped in the flag and face painted and they were all of them biting their fingernails, that sort of an evening for Spain. I think um, they were waiting for Ed Sheeran to come out. <laughs> This is, uh, this is the big show in town for Scotland tonight, despite Ed being uh, strumming away in his guitar across the city. Scotland and Steve Clark on the cusp of a very famous victory here, as long as nothing goes wrong in these last 10 minutes. This is Inigo Martinez inside the Scotland half, gives it low to the feet of Guy, and another unforced error, a pass miles away from Gavi, and straight out for a throw, and that has happened too often tonight for Spain. I think you, you mentioned it, Pat, quite early in the second half, where Spain are, are, have been spooked, and now you're looking at the players that the, you would expect to take control and take the responsibility. That's that's a simple pass. Mm. Just take it in and drive forward. He tries to flick it round the corner as if to say, you take it. I don't want to try and be the one to make that, that killer pass or take control of the situation, which is so unlike Spain. Yeah. Do you know what? First half, I was actually really quite impressed with Spain. You know, really good pace and zipped the ball about. Scotland lived with them for most of it. The Spain for most of the second half is the Spain that I saw over in Qatar. You know, limited amount of ideas. They, you know, they've tried all what their favourite things are supposed to be. They have not come off. They've just kind of slightly run out of ideas. However, if they get a goal now, it will be, they will be hammering it into the box in every opportunity. Just try to see who's down there. Is it Hickey? Yeah, I think yeah, it's Hickey it because um, Nathan Patterson is getting ready. Scotland might be forced into a change here. We've mentioned how on a few occasions tonight the Scotland fans have been singing the national anthem. They've been singing Flower of Scotland. Of course, the, the Spanish fans can't do that. You can't sing the Spanish anthem because it doesn't have any words, there's no lyrics to it, there's, uh, there's only a handful of other anthems in the world that are music only, uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Kosovo, San Marino, I know this because Alistair Bruce Ball was on drive on Friday and that was Tony Livesey's fact of the day on Five Live, that's what we call in the, the business a filler while an injured player is being removed, Patterson comes on in place of Hickey, the Everton fullback into the defence as Scotland hope to hold on to this two goal advantage with eight minutes remaining on the stadium clock and uh, a big moment for Lewis Ferguson as well John McGuinn as ever John McGuinn he just he runs and runs and runs until the gasket blows well the gasket has blown now Ferguson's come on another very good young player yeah a player that's been sensational uh, over in Serie A for Bologna uh, and he will come on, what a, what a game to come on, man. Yeah. it's a brilliant occasion for him to come on, he deserves his opportunity, still still some work to be done. Ferguson who scored in Serie A uh, just over a week ago, his most recent game for Bologna. John McGinn is getting a little lap of honour here as he walks around from the far side of the pitch and he's been applauded by everyone he passes, Porteous throws his body in danger yet again, yellow card for Iago Aspas who jumped in the air with Scotland's central defender Ryan Porteous, Porteous still down. Not just similar to, you know, the way that uh, in the first half, uh, Robertson, he threw himself in there. Nah, that's just a nonsense, he's never going to get the ball. And that's a definite yellow card and maybe even yeah. a little bit more than that. 
a heavy yellow, a strong that yellow. sums up Spain's frustration tonight. Iago Aspas, no attempt to play the ball, elbowing into the ribcage of the opponent there. Porteous back up at his feet, the clock ticking on, the party atmosphere moving up in notches, as I think even us non-neutrals are beginning to feel this might be a comfortable win now coming up for Scotland I'd be sending John again back round the long way again there just to fire that crowd that wasn't the reaction free kick for Scotland to be taken by Andy Robertson midway into Spanish territory floats it into the penalty area header out and away by David Garcia but they haven't fully cleared Lyndon Dykes hooks it back in again and Igor Martinez is brave heads it away McTominay stretching out a boot has caught him and it's going to be a free kick to Spain inside their own penalty area, but they feel out of time here. Spain, two goals down, six minutes to go. John McGinn has finally made it to the dugout. Yeah, it's all about now that Scotland have got a lot of substitutes on there. They all have to make sure they do the right job, understand their positions, get to the pace of the game as quick as possible. So far, so good. A few leaf playoffs out of it. Scotland have won each of their last seven qualifying matches is this about to become eight a team that has grown in stature in experience they know each other so well now Williams attacks down the right hand side for Spain and great work by Andy Robertson and he really enjoys that little high five of a celebration with Kenny McLean Robertson cutting out the cross at source corner to Spain always helps when you get help over you can make a diving tackle with the McLean yeah. It's a clever routine from the corner kick, but it doesn't work as Danny Carvajal tried to return it to Iago Aspas and he pushes it too far in front of him. And it's been an, an off-colour performance from Spain tonight by their own extremely high standards. They have not played to the best of their ability and that's taking nothing away from Scotland who've created the frustration that has led to so many of the Spanish errors. Yeah, I think the timings of the goals for Scotland getting the early goal getting the momentum early in the game there were periods in that first half as Pat says where Spain looked really good really comfortable in possession probing it looked like it was going to be a matter of time then Scotland get the goal again at the start of the second half and Spain have just they've run out the ideas and in, in how to break Scotland down it looked like the tactics early was get it wide it crosses into the box of course we've got guys in the, in the central defence that's their game defending crosses defending balls coming into the box and Spain have just simply run out of ideas but I don't want to speak too soon and I won't I will say that until after the final whistle goes there are no Scottish chickens being counted four minutes to play Scotland's number four scoring both of the goals Scott McTominay who also got two goals against Cyprus on Saturday what a week the Manchester United man has had Spain of possession halfway line Inigo Martinez orange boots gives it short to Gavi He's not been given much time to come on and try and influence things here. The little Barcelona whiz kid gets it back again, number nine on his back. Short to the feet of Rodri. Clever little dummy sold by Jeremy Pino. Spain whizzing the passes around here, but still outside the penalty area. Rodri tries to turn on the edge of the box. Good ball out to Gaia, left-hand side. Cross takes a deflection, which made it tricky, but Grant Hanley put his firm forehead on it and cleared it away outside the penalty area. Not fully clear, though. Spain come again. David Garcia to Inigo Martinez, midway inside Scotland territory, central position. Gavi picks it up on the left-hand side, sends it across. Hanley miscues, but it goes over his own crossbar. A little heart in mouth moment, but it's out for a corner for Spain back to Craven Cottage England under 21s against Croatia and Henry Moran into the final four minutes of the 90 England have a goal back it comes from the penalty spot Morgan Gibbs White won it fouled by the goalkeeper rolled it into the bottom corner England have hope in the game England won Croatia two. Spain's corner comes in by Williams headed out and away good distance on it uh, away by Lyndon Dykes there but there's no one up forward for Scotland so Spain can come again it's out to Williams on the right hand side having taken the corner running up against Robertson coming in field of him Gavi now tries to twist and turn there's no room however Robertson's back there anywhere will do as he clips it away and the flag was raised anyway and Spain were offside a free kick to Scotland they can take their time over this two minutes to go 2-0 in front Scotland are almost there do you know what? It's, it's the comfort of the defending. It's the fact that look, Robertson's not diving in. The defenders are staying in the feet saying, you have to do something special if he is. And they really haven't dropped the constant literation levels at any point in this game. And it's been 10, 15, 20 minutes since you've thought, they have, they've run out of ideas. It's really fine for Spanish side. 
I've met, been met to look quite ordinary most of the time. Here is Thiago Aspas rolling the ball in front of Williams. Great acceleration to get into the penalty area. Finds his cross too, but acrobatically headed away by Porteous. And then they got to get a free kick here. Scotland on the edge of their penalty area. Too much pushing and shoving in the penalty area. Spaniards flinging themselves, trying to get a touch of the ball. And it was Rodri leaning in uh, to the back of Ferguson. That forced the referee to blow the whistle. Free kick to Scotland, who are almost there. Nearly 40 years since Scotland last beat Spain. And who knows if 40 years from now, they might well be talking about this night. This night when Scott McTominay scored early in both halves. And looking around the stadium, there's some young kids here who'll be reminding people for a long, long time that they were here at Hampden the night that Scotland beat Spain because we're moving towards stoppages and Lawrence Shanklin who was a late call up to the squad after Che Adams injury on Saturday is going to come on for the final minute of the game it's his fourth cap really? Kenny McLean plays the ball forward trying to pick out Ferguson but he can't hold on to it and Spain will try to spin away down the other end pass though is behind Borja Iglesias he does get to it eventually but the momentum has gone out of that attack for the Spaniards just as it feels that the momentum has left them in this game as a whole. Inigo Martinez over to the left-hand side. Gaia helps it on. Whole host of red-shirted players inside the Scotland half, but can they create the opportunity? Would it be enough even if they got one? Williams steadies himself. An in-swinging cross, too close to the keeper. Angus Gunn gathers it to a huge Hamden roar. Nah, that's what you want to see, isn't it? The goalkeeper coming, yeah. just lying on the floor, taking the pressure off. But just a word on London Day, it's just a matter of weeks ago, he's lying in his hospital bed with pneumonia. Yeah. Struggling, really struggling. He's been back, I think, three games he's played at QPR. And the effort and the commitment that he's shown tonight has been remarkable. So full credit to him. And it's now up to the boys on the pitch to see this out for Scotland. You may notice in the background, just a little hush. And that's because the fourth official has raised the board to say six minutes to go. This isn't over yet. There is still six to play. But we are in stoppages at the end of a very interesting evening at Hampden. What a performance this has been from Steve Clark's team. Building on the win over Cyprus on Saturday. And producing an even more complete performance here tonight. Spain have possession. David Garcia to Danny Carvajal, 20 yards inside the Scotland half. He gets it back again from Nico Williams. Flower of Scotland sips through the night air in Glasgow once again. A Scotland repel it. Throw in for Spain, taken by Danny Carvajal into David Garcia. Scotland happy to sit deep now. They don't need to apply any pressure. They just need to absorb. Gavi has it with the gloves. Infield again to David Garcia to the near touchline to Williams this is all on the periphery of the Scotland penalty area can Spain get it into an area of danger that's not bad Carvajal picks out Gavi who slips as he tries to cross it and Cooper was there to clear it out for a throw in Spain remain in the attack down the right hand side but we've played a minute and a half of the six of stoppages already Gavi into Williams those two substitutes have given a little spark to Spain but it's a night when they haven't been able to catch fire they haven't been able to ignite the flame at all the visitors as a crossfield ball towards Danny Carvajal is good ball into the penalty area held up by Borja Iglesias he did very well but no one reacted he was trying to tee it up for a teammate no one moved for him inside a very congested area Spain come again Danny Carvajal makes himself available on the right hand side supported by Barcelona's Gavi he slips as he gets the ball back to the Real Madrid man Danny Carvajal's delivery won't cause any problems as it's headed away by Cooper once again and this time out for a corner corner to Spain we're midway through the six minutes of stoppages yeah and it's uh, I mean if, if Spain could score now it's going to be a very very nervy few minutes but they haven't had any shots on target in the second half hardly corner's taken short Danny Carvajal gives it back out to Gavi it's all very intricate as the delivery comes in eventually but Scott McTominay wins the header now on the edge of the box a chance and Jeremy Pino's shot is away off target he was outside the D it was worth an attempt but it's not troubling Angus gone and Scotland still hold on to their two goal lead against Spain here on five live yeah and it's been a really organized performance in the second half real comfort about it Stevie Clark had to make some big decisions in this game you've got to say he's got the tactics staggeringly perfect all the way through I mean even those changes he's made 
He's got players that have come in, and it's one of the upsides of Scotland recently. There's a number of changes we had to make, but we weren't bringing on players that were a big difference, you know, much lower quality. The quality we've brought on has been really very close to the quality that's gone off. Long way to go in the group, of course, but Scotland about to establish a three-point lead after two games played. And it is just the start that Steve Clark was hoping for as another attempted Spanish attack just drifts away to nothing. And the ball goes out for a throw-in and Nathan Patterson will take his time over this on the right-hand side. Spain currently ranked 10th in FIFA's world rankings. 32 places above Scotland, but they've not been able to show up. And tonight, Scotland have been able to deal with everything Spain have thrown at them. Angus gone on target for a second consecutive clean sheet to start his international career. Handy's under pressure here with uh, Bora Iglesias, but the Spaniard is deemed to have fouled him. And that is going to be a free kick to Scotland on the edge of the penalty area. It's almost all over here. It is all over in Cardiff. Chris Coles. Far from convincing, but a very important win for Wales. They've beaten Latvia 1-0. Kiefer Moore's first half header. Latvia had their moments. Vladislav Gukovskis low shot saved by Danny Ward, the best of them. But four points from the opening two games. An excellent start for Wales. A draw at Croatia, backed up by tonight's 1-0 win over Latvia. Thanks, Chris. A win for Wales. Scotland on the verge of a win themselves here at Hamden 12 years since they last played against Spain the last time it was 3-1 to the Spanish in Alicante David Silva scored two that night David Villa scored it was a David Goodwillie penalty for Scotland and that defeat that night ensured that Spain would not be qualifying for Euro 2012 but here fast forward to 2023 and Scotland are dreaming of the Euros next summer in Germany what a start this would be to the tournament, getting one of the trickier games of the group out of the way as well. Spain at home is never easy, but 2-0 thanks to those two goals from Scott McTominay as jumping in in front of Bora Iglesias was Grant Hadley and Scotland get it back. Callum McGregor, where is he finding this energy from? Bursting out of defence, hurdling over Gavi and braying down on the penalty area. This could finish it off now. Good ball in to Shankland. Shoots, but it's saved by Kepa Aretha Balaga. <laughs> Scotland very nearly putting the cherry on top. Do you know what? McTominay's up there as well. He wants his hat trick. He was, he was really close to it. Absolutely brilliant play there. He's been booked, McTominay, for trying to close down Spain's attempts to take the free kick quickly. As down the other end come the Spaniards, but they're out of time now. We've played the whole six minutes. It's at the referee's discretion, but there's no way they're going to score two goals from here. And the whistle to the mouth, and the final whistle blows. And this is a famous night for Scottish football. They have beaten Spain and beaten them comprehensively as well by two goals to nil. What a week it has been for Scott McTominay off the bench to score two goals against Cyprus on Saturday into the starting 11 tonight and two goals now against Spain Scotland simply brilliant tonight Pat Nevin absolutely fantastic every part of the game I mean the quality was there as well the tactical stuff was perfect by the way if you want a party we don't care if it's raining the next 20 minutes are going to be some party in the stadium nobody is going this is one of the magical nights of Scottish history we're looking back to Paris when this man beside me scored the brilliant goal these are the nights that you really remember but also those six points you're talking about at the start of this campaign let's not get carried away but boy we've got a chance let's get carried away come on James this was excellent from Scotland tonight oh it was fantastic Steve Clark spoke about belief before the game it was there in abundance and we're sitting you, you, you still have it in the back of your mind you don't want to go too soon but we didn't see Spain causing loads of problems to this Scotland side fully deserved victory and we've turned the rain on just for the Yeah, party. what Come an atmosphere on. here. The celebrations as the rain has been dry all night. The rain is now powdering down onto the pitch. The rain over the game is falling mainly on Spain as dejectedly their players make their way off the field. Scotland celebrations, Kelly, are going to go on for a long time. This is a huge win, beating Spain by two goals to nil. They're going to go on for a long time and we're staying here till at least 10 o'clock to make sure that we catch every single second of it. And the point is you were making there, James, is it's not just a great result. That was a solid performance, an impressive performance in Scotland. Oh.
without doubt, fully deserved. Yeah, there were moments in the first half where you have to concede that Spain are going to have the ball, you sit back. But I've played in games where you get yourselves in front and all you're doing is defending. You need a massive performance from every player, particularly your goalkeeper. Angus Gunn's been really troubled tonight. Any saves he's had to make, he's made look comfortable. And this has been an incredible team and squad performance. Steve Clark, I keep saying it, spoke about belief before the game. It was there in abundance. This place is shaking. I'm going to keep jump. I'm going to start jumping because I practically am with the fact that it's shaking. But an incredible, well-deserved performance. And yes, it's a three-point lead over Spain. There was a draw earlier in the game between Norway and Georgia. That was the game we're looking at because it makes it more difficult. Imagine them coming off the pitch tonight, watching this game, expecting to see Spain beat Scotland. Scotland turning up, getting a 2-0 victory. Absolutely brilliant. Let's just remind you of how that table looks then. Scotland are top with a maximum six points from their two games. Spain in second place with three points and then Norway played two, one point. Georgia and Cyprus have only played one game. Georgia have a point. Cyprus are yet to get off the mark as we, as we expected. Can I, just, can I just ask Roddy a question? Can you tell everybody what I asked you before the game? No, because I can't remember. <laughs> you said... Did you not say that Spain were whatever odds minus one? Goal. Oh, I heard you had that conversation. I said, what was it? Was it minus one? Was it yeah. not Roddy? Yeah. Sorry, Roddy. It was somebody else. I heard you saying it. Do you know what? You, you, what you need is everything to go in your favour, right? But one of the things you need if you're going to be Scotland, and we've known this for years, is have this crowd behind you. The place has been bouncing. The ball stayed behind. The Scotland fans have one quarter lap of honour, but they've walked around and thanked every one of the fans as well. It needs every player, it needs a co his coach, it needs the tactics, it needs quality coming through, but it needs this bunch as well. We've had it all tonight. And they've had it all of late as well, because this is a fantastic run of form for Scotland at Hamden. Yeah, um, it's now becoming not a surprise. It's been this. I mean, this, this one is. Uh, yes, like, yeah, it's a surprise, but you're not shocked completely because of the quality of the players they've got. And you're bringing on players like Hickey, who wasn't even in the team or considering the team. He's now comfortable there. But he comes off and you bring in Patterson. Now, he and a better goal. He wasn't even considered either. But so we've got players all over the place that are very, very special. And again, goes off. Lewis Ferguson. I mean, again, about a year ago, not even a consideration. But as he walks on, we're all saying, now yeah, we're comfortable. It's the strength, in depth, the quality that Stevie Clark has got his fingertips just now. This is something to get really excited about for Scotland. And the goal scorer, Scott McTominay, two of them tonight, four of them in his last two games. He's on the hot streak. Yeah, he is, and that's, that's what happens when you get, you know, he gets forward. We spoke about the, the impact at London Dykes and everybody speaks about the goals that he scores. It doesn't matter if he leads the line and you bring support from midfield, which is exactly what we got from Scott McTominay. We're used to seeing it from John McGinn, but it was McTominay tonight. And Kelly, I'm not surprised Scotland have won this game tonight because of the way that Steve Park has built this squad. Slowly but surely he's built the belief. There was huge disappointment in the summer when we lost the, the playoff to Ukraine. But we knew that this group would be back because they've been, they've been, they have that resilience. So, fantastic performance. Scott McTominay getting the goals. Uh, Connor mentioned it during the game. I think he's had four shots in two games. He's got four goals. Not bad. As Jen said, he, he's not surprised by this result. He was confident before the game, Roddy. But when you look at the difference between where these two sides, and I know the world rankings are far from, from perfect, but when you look at the, the recent history of both these sides, even if you take into account maybe Spain's wobble, the fact they didn't perform in, in the, the World Cup, even then, and a, a neutral observer would be surprised by this one. Well, James and Pat have both been talking, the word that's been used again and again and again is belief. But we have had so many examples of belief that was betrayed or undermined over the years. Tonight took us back to that time, 39 years ago. I was dancing in this stand when your dad got that third goal. I was dancing with you tonight. And uh, what we saw is a series of false dawns and suddenly the sun is shining on Steve Park, Scotland. And I'm saying that on a night when the black heavens are drenching us. Pat, we also talked before the game about the importance of that left-hand side for Scotland and we saw it again tonight. Um, look, it's world class. Tierney's a phenomenal player. And we know there's, there's no argument that Robertson is a world class player because he's playing with a world class 
team uh, in Liverpool and there's an important part of that Liverpool team. So you've got to make the best use of that. Stevie Clark found a way of getting the best out of them and they understand each other because they're both intelligent players. And the fact that one goes and the other stays, the overlaps, the underlaps, the pure intelligence of the play. So, you know, I, I, that's one thing, the left-hand side. But don't panic because the right-hand side is going to be okay as well. It may be a few years behind, but it's coming as well. When you put that all together, the system works perfectly well. I, mean, I keep on saying, we have got back up in every position. Remember, Scotland didn't have them, their main striker tonight. They still managed to score 2-0. And you're back on it, McTominay. He'll get a lot of the headlines. He'll deserve a lot of the headlines. I think he's just been watching John McGinn for a while and thinking, I'm getting fed up with you getting all the headlines, mate. They're playing in a similar position. And, you know, when he pushes a little bit further forward, it makes a big difference to him because he can then get into that final third. He doesn't always... Be he hasn't always been able to do that in Man United because he's often asked to be the most central defender, the most sitting one. In Scotland, he's been, he's been told, when he can get there, get there. And uh, he's quite good when he gets there. Andy Robertson, though, could have had an early red card in this game and there was a little bit of gamesmanship, maybe, from, from Spain in this one and the referee changed at, at half-time. Did, did that make a, a difference? Um, I, I, I don't know because Scotland scored so early in the, the second half that the gamesmanship had to stop them because I think there was an instant towards the end of the game where one of the defenders goes down, he rolls about and his teammates are ro running to pick him up and say, no, 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 we're losing, we need you to get up, stop rolling about. I hope it did because in the first half, Hossolo, it was frustrating me because he's trying to buy it and I think that shows the frustration of Spain. Spain are coming here and everybody's saying, well, they'll go and win in Scotland. The frustrations were there for all to see. They were trying to buy fouls, they were trying to buy penalties, they, they weren't getting it. Thankfully, the referee changed at half-time because it was frustrating me a little bit, but let's not talk about the referee tonight. Let's talk about this brilliant performance. But the reason that, that I was going to mention him was less about... because there weren't any... Out, like terrible decisions or any sort of huge decisions that he, that he had to make other than maybe that early one for, for Randy Robertson it was more about the fact that it gave an extra bit of spice to the game and that contributed to lifting the crowd as well yeah uh, and we watched it we, initially we're thinking Poro's just making the most of it and then we see it again we think and Andy could be in trouble here thankfully you know it wasn't enough to, for a red card but the, it was definitely there Pat spoke about being competitive. Scotland made it competitive for Spain. Steve Clark said before the game, Spain need to drop off a little bit. They probably did towards the end of the game, but I think that's because of him and his players. They made that frustration for, for Spain. And then towards the end of the game, you've, you've got Portis going down, rolling about. You've got Aaron Hickey going down, rolling about, which makes Spain even even more mad, which you like to see. So one of, yeah, one of the things about um, Scotland, you know, before the game, and Stevie Clark was talking, he's been asked about it, and he says, belief, no, we want to win. We want to win this game, but we also want to go through as one of the top two teams, right? You hear some managers saying that, and you know, it's just a line. It's what you kind of have to say. Can you hear Steve Clark saying it with those kind of, those kind of completely dead eyes of, no, no, I believe this, and I want you to believe it, and I want those players to believe it, and I want these fans to believe it. He's getting through, and you know, the job he did before he came, you know, came here, you know, was, with command it was extraordinary. It's not a fluke that what Steve Clark's doing just now. He gets something, he builds it, and makes every single player better, but he makes the unit even better than that. By the way, in that uh, year before he joined Scotland with Kilmarnock, that calendar year, Kilmarnock had more points in the Premier League division than Celtic. And by the way, someone we haven't mentioned much tonight, Angus Gunn. Two clean sheets in your first two appearances for Scotland, having once played for England 21s against Scotland and needing that crowd to accept you. That crowd adores him now. <laughs> I love the fact that, uh, you know, he'll come and say to his dad tonight, thought you said international football was hard. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's thinking, I wonder what took me so long, he should have made that decision years ago. So when you look at the, at the table and we're thinking about where, where Scotland might end up, there's still a long way to go in terms of, of qualifying. But having beaten the favourites for the group, having beaten Spain, having got six points from the, the opening two matches, having seen the way that the team is capable of performing and performing here at Hampden in particular, what are your thoughts on, on qualification? Have they changed because of this game? Yes. I, honestly, it's a good question. Absolutely have. 
Um, beforehand, thinking if we made scrape second, it would be absolutely brilliant because I think Georgia are going to take, you know, going to take points off of others. I'm completely to change now. I think let's go that's for just it. years of heart. That's years of heart. Oh, I mean, well, <laughs> but, mine's before I, I was confident. And it's not just after the event, and there's still a long way to go, that Scotland could occupy the top two spots, really yeah. because... Both I don't, <laughs> Well, I, either of the, uh, the top two spots, because I, I look at the summer, and it was a huge disappointment, but, but i seen it for what it was, I thought it was a blip, and Scotland have bounced back from that, and they've used it, and, and to get success, sometimes you have to fail, and you don't want to be missing out in the World Cup, but it's how you respond to that. And I was confident in Steve Clark and this group of players, having tasted the... the their time at the Euros, and not a great one for them, that they would be desperate to get back, that that wasn't the end of the journey for them. So I, I was confident they would bounce back, and they've, they've shown that in abundance tonight. And you look at the games coming up in June, against Norway and against Georgia, and I'm not, I, I don't think it's impossible if you can beat Spain, then surely you can beat Norway and Georgia. If you go and you win your two games, there, we're talking about the distance already. It's insurmountable for those two teams yeah. in Scotland to go and win them. We're allowed to get carried away, and you should get carried away after a performance like this, and a week, you know, a few days like this. But the thing that you, you stand back a little bit and you think, okay, is it is it too much excitement because of we had these good performances? The thing that makes me feel better, above everything else, is the fact that we have good, good players coming off, and then another exceptionally good player comes on as well, and improving players. You know, there was a long time we think, where are we going to get our next centre back? Where are we going to get our next right full back? Because we waited a long time for one that was of the very top. Hey, we had a bunch of full backs that done a good job for us there and gave everything. But you look at Hickey and Patterson, the capabilities that they've got now, and you think, wow, that's special. That's like Serie A goes into Premier League kind of stuff. And then you bring on Ferguson, and you know, Lewis Ferguson's a player who's going to be special. There are one or two others in the wings as well. And one of the great things about Stevie Clark is. You will not wait. If you're good enough, you're old enough. It used to be they'd wait till you're 24, 25, whatever. No, nope. you've got to learn international football. You've got to believe in it. Uh, and that's what's making me feel more confident than anything else. There's no player that we can do without now. There's no player that we're thinking, oh, he's injured, we're, we're, we're gone now. I don't think there is a player like that anymore. Pat, there was a the point you made in, in commentary about waiting to get nervous you kept saying that this is this has been a much more relaxed set. I mean obviously the second goal had gone in but a more relaxed second half you were and it wasn't that there were any moments where it felt tense is that you were waiting for the moment until yeah. until everybody started to feel tense well we've been here before you know we've been <laughs> there so many times I have to hate it I hate it when a commentator gets there before me but Connor <laughs> spotted it he said comfortable before I'd mm. answer no surely not and then five ten minutes later you think actually you know, it's all right, this. You know, they're not creating a lot of chances. We're defending well. When they're putting balls in the box, in the first half, it looked dangerous every time they put a cross in. They got to the headers a, a, first a few times. By the second half, we were winning everything in there. They had to do something much more intricate. And they weren't. They didn't look as if they were capable of doing it. I think it would have been worse if it was 1-0. <laughs> I think Clearly. So. <laughs> Clearly. I think when you get the 2-0 and you see the frustration because when you've got the 1-0 yet, you need to go into your shape and you frustrate Spain and make them work really hard to get their openings. But at 2-0, it adds the pressure onto Spain. They have to find two goals just to get a result out of the game. They're forcing passes, the ball's going out of play. They're maybe putting crosses in that they, they don't really need to at that moment in time. So yeah, 2-0 certainly helps and, and it's unusual for Scotland. You're normally sitting there with 1-0 and no fingernails left. Roddy, final thoughts? The measure of this is if you had said to 52,000 people outside this ground before the start, midway through the second half, one team will be swiping at the ball carelessly and panicking. Who do you think it will be? How many people would have said Spain? That's an achievement. It is a huge achievement for Scotland. There is still a long way to go in terms of qualifying for Euro 2024, but they've beaten the group favourite Spain by two goals to nil here at Hamden this evening.